What is up guys? Zach in here. Rick in here. And in today's video, we are on the road and we really want to pack in a week's worth of live streams in this video. And really, how are we going to do this? I thought of one topic and one topic only. How to go from no deals at all mm -hmm. and really just a complete webinar. I don't know how we, what the gurus call it, but like a complete like lecture breakdown of how you can go from doing no deals at all to getting your first deal. So how, how do I encompass the entire wholesaling community for one live video this week? And I thought, how can I help everyone go from zero deals to one deal to five deals to 10 deals per month, right? So if you're watching this and you haven't done wholesaling deal, this video is for you. Perfect. If you are doing one deal a month consistently, this video is for you. If you're doing two, three, four, whatever type of deals you're doing per month, if you haven't hit that 10 deals a month threshold, this is the video for you. So if you're a beginner, this is probably half for beginners, half for advanced. It's for the whole entire wholesaling real estate community today. So that's what we're doing. That's why I'm excited. That's why I'm jacked up because we're going to help the people out today. And uh, we're ready to go, guys. So we are in Tampa, Florida. So yeah. we have a family wedding. So we're super excited for that. Uh, wedding's tomorrow. So pretty fun. But really, guys, it's business. All right. It's business time. All right. So we're ready to go. We're going to break down exactly how you can basically go from zero to your first deal, first deal, two, three, four, all the way to 10 deals per month. That's what we're sharing right now. I'm excited. I'm ready to go. I think this this live stream is probably going to change somebody's life where they make that change. I know. I agree. You just got to you have to take action with what we give you, though. No, guys, we're, like this is an action pl step plan. We're going to break down how many leads you have to pull, what type of marketing to do, what your budget guide is going to be, and everything like that. So without further ado... Let's get it going. Let's jack it up. Let's. I'm, I'm excited. Let's I'm go. ready to go because I I couldn't do a live yesterday. I, I was it's driving crazy. We're in the car. I'm like, I want to do a live. I want to help the people out. But you know what? We try to live driving. It doesn't yeah, work. It, it doesn't work. So I, 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 I'm so excited. So guys, there's so much I want to give to you, so much stuff I need to give. So before we break it down, do, this, do us a big favor, guys. One big favor. Just do it for us, guys, really quick. Make sure if you're watching this video, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that like button. Comment below your questions, and we're going to break down everything you need to know, guys. This is literally, if you paid us $1,000, so we're in a hotel room right now. So most hotel seminar guru things are in hotels, right? right, right, right. So maybe you're in the hotel with us. You're, uh, we're in the big room. You're sitting down on your desk, and you paid $1,000 to our virtual event. Our pep rally. Our, our event. And no, there's no $10,000 guru thing at the end, no, no gimmicks. If you paid us $1,000 to sit down and we have thousands of people behind us and they ask Zach, how do I go from zero deals to one deal, one to 10? How, how do you do this? Really, the, the question we're going to share really is how to make 50K a month. Where, where are we going to say? What, what do we present, right? And no, I can do a lot in my car, but I was able to write down with you mm -hmm. a whole systematic guide of how to really go from start to finish. And this is going to be amazing. Yeah, it's funny because the presentations gurus give you on stage and then what you'd sit down in an, like an organic mastermind where people actually do the business, I guarantee you are two different, two different speeches, two different conversations. But here's the thing, guys. If you paid us $1,000, I'd probably get this guy just to come out for a live performance of this so he could scream to you to get your butt out of bed and get it going. Yeah. So without further ado, let's get the information. Let's, but let's get it going, guys. It is wholesaling time, baby. <laughs> Fuck out of bed, bitch, go. Get up, get up, and they got go up. Gotta wake up, gotta wake up, bitch, get up. Get up, get up, get up. Get up. back we're ready to go and we're really just ready to share it right like right. we are so excited for this one guys i know so many people are going to really 
uh, come out for our presentation today. So we, uh, honestly, this is embarrassing to say, but we do have a suit jacket. Actually, we're in my hotel room. You got your hotel room over there, and you yeah. got your suit jacket. I got my suit jacket. I we should have brought it. it. Yeah, we should have worn a suit jacket today, but something uh, about that jacket <laughs> makes you an official like guru. Listen, guys, when we're all sitting down on this earth, we all go back to the ground like we came out. If you think any one person's greater than another, it's it's ridiculous. So it's to me is the more people we can help out, the better the legacy we can help and make you guys really truly effective wholesalers. Because that's what at the end of the day, once these pep rallies and everything's over. You got to go out and get deals. And the problem is most gurus aren't going to get out there on the road with you and go out and hunt for deals. No. And they're just going to give you strategies that work like over a weekend and it's really exciting and you can't question anything. So we're going to kind of break yeah. that down today. So welcome to our presentation. Welcome to this. So we're excited. We're ready to go. So this is a fancy studio. By this the is way. a fancy studio. This, so man. one thing I can tell you is what we're going to do today. Kind of like you said, you have to take action, pep rallies, all the stuff. Let's do football because we love football, right? And mm -hmm. I know everyone's rolling their eyes. I don't play football. I'll, I'll use a couple of analogies on this, but this is really football, right? So this two hours we're going to do on this presentation, we're going to go like this is in, like this ain't your uh, guru's 15 minute like breakdown of the entire pre like this is like so right now we're in a huddle and what I'm going to tell you to do in this video is I'm going to show you what the play is. I'm going to show you what the play is. I'm going to show you what route to run. I'm going to show you everything you need to do. Here's the issue. When I say break and I, and I say hike, which is when this video is over, you got to perform, okay? And it's one thing knowing the play, right? It's yeah. like, no, okay, I, I got to go, like, you know, I got to run a dig route, right? Or maybe like a quick post. There's one thing also doing it, right? And then the ball gets thrown at you, and then all the people start running at you, right? Like, it's a different vibe, right? But really what we're going to do today is just show you the play and show you how to do it, and that's where we're ready to go. Like, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to break down. So let's kind of break this down. So – how to get 10 deals a month from $0. So let's kind of, let's talk about this, right? So if you have $0, no money, you're broke right now, okay? How to go from 10? All right, there's no quick answer to this, right? Like we really got to systematically break this down. So this is going to be the most funniest way to answer it, but it's the honest truth. How do we go from zero deals to 10 deals a month? Baby steps, right? So we got to focus on three main stages I found, right? This is going from doing one deal consistently a month, not one deal a month, mm -hmm. like one deal and then a couple of months like that. One deal a month consistently, consistency, five deals a month, and then scaling it up to 10. Now, I have really good news for everybody watching this video right now. We have hundreds of thousands of followers, subscribers, people in a membership of our groups, uh, people in free Olson that we have over half a million people through all of our stuff. And if I include TikTok and all, like, hundreds of thousands and I've seen what it takes and I've studied, you know, like, um, you know, Dave Ramsey, I, I haven't really listened to Dave Ramsey in years, but like he always does this thing where he studies millionaires and he kind of breaks down how millionaires get there. And it's, it's good mm -hmm. for most beginner people. Right. Yeah. And I kind of did that. Like really in that, I was really thinking of like, why don't I study the millionaires from our stuff and really study them, interview them. Do, and guys, have you seen pretty much every Monday I've been doing that where I just, interview different people doing hundreds of thousands of dollars in wholesaling real estate just from our free content. No yeah. guru, not, nothing, no coach, nothing like that. And I'm finding every single one of these people, I was talking to Devin the other day. He's in our wholesaling office for real Facebook group. He made 700 K this year and he's in our local market and he lives virtually. Right. And <laughs> I think he said, I think he sends 40, 50,000 postcards a month. Like, like it's insane, but like I was able to break down his entire business, broke down Corey's business, broke down uh, Joe's business this week, right? Like I'm figuring out very quickly, the people are going from one deal a month to people doing five deals a month, people doing 10, like it's very systematically. And it's kind of weird to say, but like they all pretty much do the same thing. Like if I go to a bodybuilder, they pretty much do the same thing as the other bodybuilder guy, right? And I go to elite swimmer, they kind of mm -hmm. do the same. They're all kind of bunched in the same way. And that, that's really what I want to share today also. Like, what are those people doing? Because the things those people are doing are very simple, but they're also advanced, but they're also hard. It's it's weird to say, yeah. but we I, I just want to break it down. So, But, but it, it comes from a light whereas I remember the day I started wholesaling and the frustrations trying to get over that learning curve. Yeah. I remember your frustrations with it. And the thing is, by us doing this free, we have to adapt and learn. And so we want to take the people that are successful with our information and go, okay, 
what did this person do differently than the people that were successful? After a while, it's actually, it becomes clearer than day, yeah. okay? And we're here to kind of break that down for you and tell you how it works because you are no different than me and Zach to the people that have had tons of success. And a lot of you are just waiting for that little switch, that little bit of light yeah. bulb. And I'm here to tell you, it's not as aha of a moment as you think. It's just no. massive consistency. We want to kind of walk through today. By us learning from you guys, teaching you for free, forces us to find the most natural, organic way to make you successful, as opposed to a guru that gets paid. He or she's going to get paid regardless of your outcome and result. We're kind of the opposite. We get more notoriety by making more of you guys successful and helping as many people yeah. get access to whole stuff. So we do. Like, guys, if I can tell you what to do and you don't become successful, I hate to say it, but like it's because of a certain three or four things. And it's not because I feel like I know everything that works, but the issue is if I tell people to do something, the people that take the action are always going to do the work, right? And they, they always become successful. And the coolest part is like why we love doing these live streams. Yeah. Someone come up and say, Zach, your stuff sucks. It doesn't work. It blah, blah, blah. And they, like, they're so angry at me, right? And the coolest part is they kind of hop on, they talk to us. And I'm like, did you do this, this? And then like, wait, I didn't do this the right way. I'm like, oh, so change this thing. And then boom, they're off to the races, right? Exactly. So how do you get 10 deals, right? Let's start one deal, right? So I, I would say we just need to focus. So I would say I want everyone in the comments to go ask me this question because uh, I, I would love to know, right? Um, how many of you guys watching this right now? Be truthful. Be honest with yourself. I, we need self-accountability. I'm going to be on a weekly uh, mastermind Zoom with you, okay? You're not paying me 10 k How many? Because it's like a virtual uh, yeah. event. Raise your hand virtually, right, if you have not gotten your first deal yet. There's no shame in that, right? There's so many newbies out here. Like, raise your hand virtually. There's an emoji. In here? Yeah, they could send the emoji. I didn't know that. Raise your hand. Just tell us if you haven't gotten your first deal yet. And I would love to know. There's no shame in that. It's not it, about it's, a very, it's about help. It, like, it's just so no it's authentic help. Because I want to know how many people are focusing on this part, how many people are focusing on the other part. I would love to know. So if you haven't gotten your first deal yet, there's no shame in that. Because I'm telling you straight up, there's people in here that haven't gotten their first deal. They're a year into it. And they get it. like, this is why I love interviewing people. Because I literally talked to uh, Micah. So his name is Micah. And I interviewed him on Monday. And it's being recorded, edited, all this stuff. And I, I don't know, Michael might be in the chat. He got his first two deals in his first 30 days. And then I went and interviewed uh, another guy, another gal, actually. She didn't get her first deal in eight months. But she's doing 100K a month. Yeah. So the thing you have to understand, it's not the journey. It's not the destination. And I, I guys are going to hit me with football analogy. If I judge Tom Brady based on his sophomore year of college – how good of a uh, athlete he was. Huh. Oh, it'd be terrible, you know, because like uh, what Ryan Leaf, remember him? He's the he's the guy that d didn't do well in the in the uh, NFL. He was he was probably way better his sophomore year, right? Projected way better. The problem is, it's not about how good you are your first month or year in wholesaling or yeah. two or three. It's about how you are year five, six, seven, eight. Guys, if you just improve ten percent every single year for years, like for ten years, you double your efficiency. So. I see everyone on here. This is really cool. I love it. Um, no deals yet. That, that's fine. That like, there's no problem. And I want to know how many people want to focus. So for those people who raised their hand, guys, I appreciate you uh, participating. I, I think a lot of people you got to act like this is like you're in person, right? Because you're going to pay attention to it more. So we got so, guys, sit down in the front row there. Yeah, please. sit down in the front row. So we know that you have to focus on your first deal. And your first deal. Let's be very conservative. This is going to be about $5,000 a month. Uh, that, that's not bad. I think $5,000 a month is our very good goal as a beginner. The coolest part you're watching this, you want to get your first deal, you don't have to make this a full-time thing. Like this is 10, 15, 20 hours at most Like if you want to get your first deal, right? I did a part-time when I started. I did part-time. You did part-time. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, it's, there, there's no problem, guys. And so let's kind of focus on getting your first deal, right? So I want everybody, before we break – now we're going to break down the information, right? The one thing I want everybody watching this too, since you raised your hand, I know who raised their hand in the chat, okay? You saw them? You saw people that raised their hand in the chat? I did. So we know who raised their hand in the chat. Two reasons why I did this. And yeah, guys, if you ever come to my virtual event here, which you guys are, you know I'm going to put your butt to the fire. And it's very uncomfortable. We have to understand when you get uncomfortable, that is when you get very, very powerful. And that's when things are changing. I want everybody to commit to January 1st they'll have their first wholesaling check in their hand. I want to see every, this, this same amount of people 
that comment raised their hand that didn't get the first deal. I want the same amount of people to commit to January 1st, they'll get their first wholesaling real estate check. It's not a, I wish, that'd be kind of cool. No, a, I will. Okay. Deadline. And it, it, it's a deadline, right? And here's the thing. Pressure makes diamonds. The last time I did this was, the last time I did this was July, in July, right? Yeah. For the uh, 30, 30 day wholesaling challenge. Yeah. I committed everybody to get their first deal in 31 days. It cre I, I never had so many people get their first deal in a month from any of our content than that month. Just and we had, urgency. I think we doubled our subscribers, but still not, I did not have, that month was the greatest month of wholesaling success for any of our students. Like if you look on the people that joined the challenge, that got the first deal. You know why? I'm, I'm not even saying because our content was like so amazing. It's because people committed, right? They, they made that commitment. So those people are committing. I love it. I, I see the commitment. Penelope's making the commitment. Brandon, Rome, Romeo. Uh, I love it, guys. Love it. Jackson, Jason. I love it. So is this where I give them, uh, get the credit cards out because they're all riled up now? Right? You're supposed to yeah. run up and down the yeah, aisle yeah. high-fiving everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you pep yeah. them up. You program to keep saying yes like 10 times. And then everybody committed to yes. Meet Sarah me in the right here, she has the uh, she has the credit card reader. She'll happily swipe. Um, but the reason was you have to make a deadline. Okay, like there's there's no games around that. I love you guys watching our live streams. I love it. I'd rather you watch our live streams after you've gotten a deal or two than not getting a deal. Right. So I want everyone to make a commitment. Not that you're going to quit if you don't get a deal by January, but I want you to make a commitment. That is my date. I'm gonna get my first deal. Write that down. Put pen to paper. It's, I sound like an old person, older person saying this, but when you do put a deadline, she a hates commitment, pen to paper. I do pen to paper, I'm a paper guy. It will work so well. So January 1st, this is your deadline for everybody. So it forces you to take accountability when you write something down, I guess you can electronically put it in, but, um, whichever way is going to force you because a lot of you guys talk about, well, I need someone to get accountability. Honestly, you have to take accountability for yourself first. Nobody can ever do that for you. They can babysit you, but eventually for you to be truly successful and do something that you want to commit to, you have to be accountable. So if you guys think a guru can make you accountable, they can do it short term, but eventually you're going to have to develop the discipline and the habit to do it. Yes. So make sure you write that down January 1st. So what do you want you to do right under January 1st? Just write your why. And it can be anything, right? So like my why, if I started, if I was doing this challenge, I'm thinking me at 17, January 1st, I don't want to work as a bag boy the rest of my life. Or I don't want to work in this grocery store the rest of my life. You, what would you have written? I got to get the hell out of this cubicle of a, a prison of an office. I, listen, if you yeah. guys work for corporate America, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I just watched all my bosses get promoted. Then I watched them get fired. And I looked at the long line and I just said, hey, and by the time you figure out your take home pay and what you get walloped on taxes and you get no tax breaks as the W2 employee, you get nothing. Oh, no. Um, the raise you can get just by creating your own business like wholesaling is amazing. But more importantly, I just wanted the freedom of time because that's how this guy's sitting next to me because I was able to spend a ton of time with him. So I flipped properties with my kids and I made it like fun and exciting. Although sometimes it wasn't fun and exciting and it works really well. So, um, no, I just tired of being a robot. Like I, I just write it. Why work on someone else's dreams when you can work on your own? Yeah. So guys write it down, whatever it is, you don't have to say it on the comments, make it a private to yourself, but commit the date and then write what it is. And the reason why I want you to write this is because I want you to have that written down, not on your phone, nothing like that. So when you are doing whatever marketing you're doing and you're like, you know what, you think of an excuse because your brain, I promise you, it will think of an excuse. If I go on a treadmill right now and run two miles, which I can, a mile, a, mm, 0.75 miles, my brain's going to think of, oh, Zach, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. You should do some work. Your brain's going to find any way to try to get you out of this situation. And your brain will. Even if you are the baddest person on the planet, your subconscious wants you to be safe and whatever you're doing is probably not yeah. safe. When you think it, when you do, when you think of that bad thought, it's subconscious. It's not even how you really are because you are a champion watching this. Think back to that date and the reason why. And if that reason why is not powerful enough, you're just going to quit. 
that reason why has to be powerful enough. And we want to condition everybody before we kind of get in the information of getting that ready. So it's kind of like when you get on the treadmill. If I say I'm doing two miles or five miles, I set it and I do not, unless my legs break, you have to have that kind of commitment. So like once you set it, then you start doing that self-talk. Well, you know, you went a mile, like you got to find a way to make a commitment and keep doing it. Like a wedding date, right? Yeah. How many people, you know, set a wedding date and they do it like, so, cause they've set the date, everything's Most in people. motion, but the hardest part about getting, <laughs> this is terrible advice. Hardest part about getting married is like setting the wedding date because then it's official and you have to take action. So guys, this day we're giving you is like a wedding day. I know we're, we're here on a, a, a wedding in Tampa, but maybe my niece is watching. I'm trying to. Yeah, my, my cousin's getting married. So this, this is great information, great wedding advice. But like you ever know, when people set a wedding date, it's like a 98% probability of it getting it done. It's the same thing with you guys. because they love each other. But we'll, 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 that's for that's another day. Okay. Wedding's a whole different. <laughs> so let's talk about it. So now we have the information. Let's break this down. Now we have the commitments, right? So wholesaling real estate, let's talk about the first deal and then we'll get to the other stuff, right? Because I will tell you this straight up, anybody watching, zero to one is so much harder, so much harder than one to two and two to three. Guys, 12 to 13 or 13 to 14 deals, it's easy. Zero to one, hands down, the hardest thing to do. And it is like a rocket ship, okay? I'll tell you this a million times. The atmosphere gets uh, thinner the higher you are, right? I awesome. remember going to Colorado, like, yeah. Oh, it's terrible. So like a rocket ship, the most of the effort has to be taken on the first mile in the air, Is right? Is that why they go straight up? Yeah. Or it's kind of curved sometimes. Why do they just but take like, off sideways like a plane? How are they going to go up? I, I don't know. Because well, they're at an airport. All right. So, but the thing is, guys, <laughs> the hardest part on a rocket ship is the first mile. The initial thrust. The, the initial thrust. Because once you get up there, once you're in space, it's so easy to move, right? And it's just like that for wholesaling real estate. You're in a rocket ship. You're doing something insane. There has to be preparation involved, and not everybody makes it. Yeah, everybody knows that. But the thing is, if you can push past that first mile, that second mile up in the air is easier. Then you're out of our orbit. You can do like a little bit of boop, poof, you're going, right? And that is the honest truth, guys. Your momentum is just going to lead you through. And I'm, the rocket scientists are going to so look at really, each mile like a month. And that first month. Yeah, just or like, deal. You're you going, know? Yeah, so that first deal, you're, you have no initial um, thrust. You have no momentum. And I know a lot of you get really frustrated because like, this is so frustrating because I'm getting nowhere. But the problem is it does take time to build up the base of leads, the massive amounts of follow-up, and just keep it going. Because by month like three and four, it's incredible. But if you push with enough momentum in the beginning, you can easily pick up a deal in your first 30 or 60 days. It's not out of the question. It happens all the time. Yeah, but here's the thing too. It's like, let's think of a rocket. And this is the best analogy I could think of because I thought about this on the car ride. If you're doing a rocket, right? Mm -hmm. you're my, let's say you're half a mile in. You're going, Whoosh. is it okay just to stop the thrusters? No, it, it doesn't work. And that's the so problem. That, that's the, it's like marketing. So we have marketing on it. It's like a rocket ship. And you, you tumble when you you, you... you tumble and then you don't... And then you go... And then like... You have to reset your base yeah, and start all can't. over. And that's the problem. It's okay if it... Sometimes it goes the off thrust course. goes up yeah. a little bit or it starts to go off course. But you can't stop. That, like, you can't stop. When the rocket's going... You can't stop the, the, the ignition. The it, engines can't it's stop. It's a perfect analogy. Okay. And I'm telling you guys, it is your number one problem in this business. It's like... Yeah. Because your thrust is, how many phone calls I'm going to make? Or, and then you go, hey, how many calls do I got to make before I get my first deal? Wrong question. At thrust, thrust. Everything's about thrust because you need to live to get your first deal. You got to keep feeding fuel to that engine. And if you keep constantly doubting, like, okay, how much fuel is it going to take to get to the moon? You got to be like, a lot. Keep feeding that fuel. And that is your only that is your priority in the first, from day one to day 90. You have to, your whole thing is just feeding leads. And how do we do that? Massive amounts of quantity, which we're going to go over. Uh, I'm telling you guys. So quantity you, is, that is your fuel in the wholesaling game. So we got to talk about it. marketing and acquisitions. Guys, this is like a rocket ship. It's rocket. You, you got to shoot off, right? And we're at the moon right now. We're trying to get to Mars, but we're, we're working on it. But... Uh, I feel an Elton John song coming on. 
No. So that, that was marketing. So let's think about it. getting your first deal, right? It comes down to really, and I'm saying this nicely, right? It's three things, but it's really two things we're going to focus on today because I, I know everyone. So here's the thing. So it's marketing and acquisition. That's really what we need to really focus on right now. Yeah. Everyone's like, what about disposition, Zach? Disposition is very important, but I think at freeholstein.com, I don't need to keep you that accountable for dispositions because if you go to the Facebook groups, you cold call every day, you do your dispo every day, you can do well. But most people, and I correct me if I'm wrong in the, in the comments, but I look at 99% of wholesalers struggling as a beginner. Mm -hmm. It is never, Zach, I'm closing these killer deals all day, every day. Leads are coming in and I just can't sell these deals that I'm getting for 70 cents on the dollar. It is never that. It's never, it's that. never yeah. that. Okay. It is never, ever, ever that. It is always at closing or marketing. Mm -hmm. It is never, I just can't sell any deal. And the people that say they can't sell a deal, it's because they get the deal locked up for like wrong price. They're, they're way too high, right? And 99%. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but guys, is not that is never the problem. So marketing acquisitions is what we really need to focus on. And what is marketing? Okay. Marketing, if I can give a synonym to that, right? So let's not even say the word marketing. All right. Now, let's throw marketing away. Okay. Marketing is out of our vocabulary. We are changing the name to talking to sellers. Okay. That is what marketing is. It is. Having conversations. More importantly, most important, contacts. Com actual, not, not voicemails, not text, not call. Hellos. Conversations with people that might want to sell their distressed property. So the first qualification is the word sellers. It's yes. not people. It's not human beings. It's sellers. Because if you just talk to people, you are going to waste a ton of time. So someone says, hey, you just got to talk to people. That is just an open blank statement. It is not going to help you wholesale any oh, deals. Yeah. So not only do you have to talk to sellers, you guys know the next step. You guys can put it in the comments. What type of sellers do you need to contact? So if you don't know where you're going, if someone just says you just got to talk to people, it's not enough in this business. It's a very vanilla blanket statement. It's a great marketing thing, but it's not going to get you to the wholesale land. So we need to find people that need to sell their house. And sometimes, guys, here's the really key part is we contact people all the time that don't even realize in the beginning they need to sell their house that they want to sell their house. We find the ones that need to sell their house. So I can't tell you how many conversations I have with a seller that because the house is dilapidated, we found it driving for dollars, we have a conversation with them and 10 minutes going in, they're like, you know, maybe I need to think about selling this house. And I mean, that's what we do as, as entrepreneurs, as wholesalers is you just can't talk to people. There's too many people on this. How many people in the United States? 360? Like 50 three, 340 to 360 million. Yeah. So then you break it down. What percentage own real estate? And then what percentage of those people want to sell their house? And then what percentage of those people have a motivation to sell someone like us? Yeah. yeah. And you got to like just start with that. That's the easy part, guys. Okay. So don't waste your time talking to people that have zero interest in selling a property because that's not going to help you in your contact quantity game. It's just going to drive you nuts. Uh, guys, that, that's... Just changing to how to talk to sellers. I promise you guys and gals out here, when you start just thinking about how can I get it, get a hold of actual people that want to sell the property, you're good to go. Just I think a lot of people have that word. I can't even say the word because it's not even a vocabulary anymore. The M word is now talking to sellers, right? That is what it's all about. Now, acquisitions. Lots of think people get stressed out over the word acquisitions too. They think sales, they start sweating. Let's just do this instead, making offers, making more offers. Mm -hmm. So if you can learn how to talk to sellers and how to make offers, that's, I think a lot of people think acquisitions being this king closure. It's just making an offer. It's, it's not. It's actually the less salesy you are, the better you're going to do. Yeah. So really acquisitions comes down to qualifying the right people and finding the motivation and then just walking through a systematic process. So you can duplicate that effort over and over and over again. And because the first few times you do it, it feels horribly awkward. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And somewhere someone taught you had to be like this slick Grant Cardone, like salesperson. Don't get me wrong. That helps in certain parts of it. But this 
It's actually just a numbers game to do it consistently. Yeah. I had no idea what I was doing my first 10 deals. I just made offers and I consistently found people with motivations. Now to get those 10, I talked to, I talked to hundreds of sellers low, yeah. not people, sellers. And then I had to find the ones with enough motivation to move forward. Uh, that's what, that's what it's all about. And yes, I, I'll tell you this. I do my live call calling. Sometimes I have to throw out the crazy sales tax. You do have to sometimes too, right? Sometimes when you're advanced, you have to throw them out. There's yeah. some slick things I do, but you don't, that is like. In the beginning, don't bother yeah. doing it because it's actually going to make it worse for you. Yeah. You're better off doing consistent action instead of trying to get all cutesy and fancy. Like this, did, did Jules Irving have to do that like reverse dunk thing? No, but it's kind of cool. cool. It's kind of cool. And I sometimes do that for the lives for you guys, but like that's what's true. So let's kind of talk about it. So if you got no deals right now, the simple fact is for 99% of everyone watching this, for about the 1%, we'll have a great conversation, okay? Hop on the one-on-ones, we'll talk. But for most people, you, you raised your hand, you haven't got your first deal. You just haven't talked to enough sellers and you haven't made enough offers. This might be very hard to, to take in, but here's the cool part. This is very easy to fix. And it, here's the thing. It's like, all right, if I know now I haven't got my first deal, I haven't talked to enough people and I haven't made enough offers. Mm -hmm. A lot of people see that and they get really upset. Like, Zach, I talked to 10,000 people. I should get a deal. You didn't talk to 10,000 sellers, right? I, like you said before, you haven't talked to enough sellers. And just that's what it's all about, right? So the question is like, what's your marketing? Like if you're not doing well, what's your marketing, right? And I'm going to break down what's the best marketing. A lot of people, they're pulling the wrong list. They're, they're doing the wrong marketing channel. The script's like wrong, right? And there's all stuff at freerealestate.com or free real estate wholesaling course. And I, you guys already know, I, I talk about that all the time. You can learn wholesaling for free and we have the scripts and everything like that, right? But really, let's talk about talking to sellers. How do I have conversation with them? with them right it is literally fishing and we love fishing so much we use that analogy i know people get crazy with it but it is fishing it is the rod same bait same lure same it's, rod here's the thing it's the rod and it's the bait right yeah if you have a really really good rod but your bait's terrible it's not going to do well and if you have a really really bad rod and great bait the rod might just fall in half right like you get a huge tarpon on like a bass thing, it's not going to do well. Kind of like that stuff you had the other day. Yeah. But um, you this huge, you know, you had a huge ball shark on like a yeah, tiny. It's a shark on a snook. Yeah. yeah. He, it wasn't pretty. He hit a tiny little snook uh, rod and then his huge bull shark ready to eat your face. Yeah. <laughs> but he was safe. We're all good. But um, <laughs> that's what it is. So you have to have both to do well, right? And I think so many people have really good one, they're about the other. So lists and marketing channel that's what it comes down to right and the most important part is when we want to have conversations with sellers we want to go after people especially in this market right now this is for basically end of 2022 2023 you want to have conversations with people that are really wanting to sell they're really motivated okay really motivated okay like hey i gotta get rid of this thing like I want to sell this thing mm -hmm. and I have a legitimate clear reason why I want to sell. Not, you know, we're thinking about it. Give me an offer that might interest me. No, no, like Zach, I want to sell this thing. Okay. And I think a lot of people say this. I don't agree with this too much of going. Some people say you have to go after a list that somebody like absolutely must has to sell, you know, like a pre foreclosure or, you know, a probate. Those are great. You add those in. Mm hmm but a lot of our big deals are deals where they don't need it. Like they don't need to sell it. Like it's not a life or death necessity, but it's just such a headache. They just want to get rid of it. Right. Yeah. Um, and really I look at motivated sellers. A lot of them could stay in the house, but it's just so much of a headache. They don't want to deal with it. Right. And so many deals we have from power landlords are like that. So uh, we get people saying that sometimes too, but um, it's all about that. Right. So let, let's kind of break this down too. So we go to the next one, you know, what are the type of lists, right? And I talk about this all the time at freewholesaling.com. Guys, I get some questions. Zach, what's your course? You know, all this stuff. Free wholesaling. It's a free course. It's free. Free wholesaling.com. Okay. It just someone put it in the chat, but that's it. Government lists. Most people, when you have no money, you're broke. 
these are lists you get for free. And these are all freelisting.com. So like, I don't have to make it. This could literally be a, I can do a 10 hour live stream on this topic. Right. And mm-hmm. I break down everything, but like go to freelisting.com. Most of it's there. The code violations, the probates, the water shutoffs, the fire damage properties, the liens, the arrest records, right. Uh, Pre foreclosures you get for free. Also, right. Credit card debt lien list, IRS debt lien list, right. Uh, evictions list. Like you, there's so many of these free government lists you can do. Just go to freelisting.com. There's so many of them. And you can really not run out of leads. And I think that's so many people, like people are like, oh, I'm broke. I, I can't do it. There's still an unlimited amount of lists. Now, it is a little more work to pull these type of lists, but they're free. Nobody besides us on this YouTube channel teaches you how to pull this list, the free government list, because they can, no one can make money off you. Okay. And yes, we, we partner with a lot of software companies. The software companies don't really pull this list because they can't really make money off of you, off of you for it. Yeah. And we love the software companies. Like, we love them. But the reason why the big gurus and the big software companies don't ever talk about it because like they can't make money off of you and it's not that profitable. Plus, and, they don't want to point you to a, uh, a free service. No, and so. it's something you can start – because you'll be successful when you pull these lists. You don't need the software service. Now, the point of software, maybe you're doing virtual. Maybe it's a little tougher. Maybe you want to scale it more. Yes, definitely the software. And we love them. But I think – this industry has been so suppressed on get, not talking about government lists. And it's so funny. I, I remember one guy, um, somebody sent me a screenshot a month ago of this guy. And they asked one guy in a live stream, like, how do I pull a government list? And they knew what a government list was. And they're like, what's a government? I, I've never heard of this before. You know, and, I, I think you've coined the phrase, we've coined we've the coined phrase it. government list. So nobody else is going to use it, even though. And the same person. We're not the government. Has messaged me before about these lists years ago. But. It, the, the gurus suppress it. It's crazy. Um, so just one rule of thought with these lists, you're going to get some resistance to overcome it. Just use persistence. That's, that's it. it. So you're going to have to be persistent just because they're free. Doesn't mean they're always simple and easy. So I teach you basic ways. If you overcome anyone's objections twice, they'll usually roll over for you. So Overcome that resistance with persistence. You can I'll, I'll give it to you for listerary.com, Zach Data, DMZach.com. You can actually pull uh, a good amount of government lists. Yeah. Not all of them. Uh, not really the big top ones. Uh, but yeah, it, it, they're but all. But just because it's free doesn't mean it's like wildly accessible to you. There's, okay. Yeah. So you can't mix up free. Like the content we teach is free to get you your first deal, get you your first hundred grand. You still got to do the work for yeah. it though. So like, don't misinterpret free as like, okay, it's going to be super easy. It just means, okay, it's free. So you got to follow a system to get it. So you're going to get some resistance because a lot of people request these lists because we, we teach you guys for free. So understanding if you get resistance, it doesn't mean quit or that was hard. It means, okay, I just, I got to kill them with kindness. So, um, and remember you can't demand stuff from people. You, you've got to ask nicely. There's no other way around it. So I agree. So the next one here are the paid lists. Right? Okay. Let me see this. Okay. Just making sure one thing. I'm good. All right. Just checking the audio. Um, so we got paid lists, right? So these are other lists you can do. Um, so pretty much these are listdiary.com, zackdata.com, dmzack, the software companies you talk about, right? There's specific lists you get from there that you can easily start scaling up first deal, right? The mm-hmm. vacants, tired landlords, pre foreclosures, you can get pretty easy on there. You can get liens on there too, but like, uh, really, I really like the high equity uh, zombie properties. They, they got a lot of really advanced stuff that you can't get on a free list. You have to pay for it, obviously. It's not crazy expensive, right? Mm-hmm. I think you get like 10,000 of these uh, for what, like 100 bucks. Like, it's not, it's, is that a cent? I don't know. Like, yeah, it's like a penny. I'm being, I'm being dumb right now today. But, it used to cost me uh, a quarter to get this stuff. So, like, it's not that expensive, but like, obviously, you can use whatever software you want. But I'm just letting you guys know that um, there are softwares out here for other types of lists. Now, the next one here, which I think everybody, if you got a hundred bucks, two, three, four, five hundred bucks for a budget for a month or a year, trying for dollars, probably your best one. I've talked about this forever, but get in your car looking for ugly looking houses. You can't pull this list. You have to earn this list. Yep. So powerful, guys. Reverse drawing for dollars, guys. Uh, it is so powerful. So drawing for dollars, reverse drawing for dollars, hands down, probably one of the most powerful things you can do. Guys, driving for dollars, it's it's been around forever. Like nobody invented this. It's been for ever since we've had cars, anything. Yeah. And I'm telling you, whenever we used to struggle with deals in our company, we get everybody in their car, they go got two or 300 leads and you come back and you got like 1500 leads. Yeah. So it can cure a lot of problems. And the other thing about driving for dollars is often overlooked. It gives you speed. 
So instead of like harvesting an entire list, cold calling that whole list or mailing them or, or SMSing them, you find out the ones that are de-stressed properties and you call directly to them. All you have to do is skip trace and it cuts like a month out of your pipeline of trying to go the traditional routes of marketing and contacting motivated sellers. So driving for dollars as a twofold effect, it has speed and it finds properties that are distressed. Hopefully you match it with a distressed property owner and a deal can go down very, very fast for yeah, driving for so dollars. Yeah, drive for dollars. Everybody knows most Tuesdays, I'm literally cold calling Zillow for style by owners. You cannot be above driving for dollars. Yeah, you can't be above calling Fizbo's. People think they're above that, guys. So many people, and I think a lot of YouTubers on wholesale, like some, some co co most of them just sell courses, but this is shocking to them. They started cold calling Fizbo's. Some of them are doing it, mm -hmm. and they're getting deals. Exactly. And I'm like, like, Anyone can really start calling. Like, so many of you are starting to do this now, and because we've been, I just been live streaming it. The deals are out there. Like, it is. There's not a. The coolest part about those is there's new Fizbos every single day. Mm -hmm. It's just a great list, and there's so many of them being done. Uh, they're a great one. These people that list their house for sale by owner, they kind of throw their house on like a Craigslist type thing. Uh, they throw it on Zillow, yeah. uh, and you just lowball them, and it works really well. And, and especially in you know markets that are going on now, it, it's. Guys, you are in like a perfect opportunity because things aren't moving like they used to. And when these properties sit and get some price reductions, they're they're much more open to talking to someone because they they don't have anybody that wants to buy their property. So exactly. Uh, next one here is just cold calling those paid lists or those government type lists. How do we get their phone number right? TruePeopleSearch.com. You can mm -hmm. use a paid software to get their phone number right. There's ways around it, right? Uh, paid software is going to probably put you back ten to thirteen, fourteen cents. Well, not guaranteed, but 85, 90% chance to get the phone number. You're probably sitting at 50 to 60% getting their phone number at True People Search. Some areas are up to 65, 70, but overall it's about 60%. You get their emails. I love TruePeopleSearch.com. You have to manually put it in, which is a lot more work, yeah. uh, but you have, you can batch in and pay for the other stuff. So same thing with SMS, you send text out. I highly recommend if you are to do cold calling, SMS text blasting, you pay for it. Whenever you have to put... Like your money on the line to pay for marketing, I do recommend you spend some extra time at freelancing.com to learn how to do it the right way. Um, I don't care if you don't use any of the softwares that we tell you to, just go through it though at least because I get people that like, I'm not a big proponent on some text blasting softwares just because uh, the deliverability rates are like 60% mm -hmm. and you're, just, you're wasting your money. I don't think it's the best one out here and it's not TCPA compliant, but people use it and they use my scripts for it and it works really well. And I would rather use, use my script on a software I don't like yep. than not because you're still going to do better with it, right? Because I know it works. I know it's creative. And uh, these gurus are not creative and they're broke and they don't know how to wholesale. So the next one here is a little more advanced, right? But we're going to talk about this when it comes to scaling a little more today also. But like just direct mail in general, right? And a lot of people don't think of direct mail. They think direct mail is like sending 40,000 postcards out. Direct mail can even be reverse rank for dollars, right? It can be just sending a letter out to 50 probates for the month, right? Like yeah. little tiny stuff. But I'm telling you, like the little tiny direct mail does really well too. And yes, the postcards are great. It's a lot more budget. It's very consistent. Uh, but every market's a little different with it. But like really, I would add in some direct mail you're looking to scale. But overall, guys, like hey, we guys understand on direct mail, like I, it is a paid service. On average, a postcard is going to cost you about 50 cents a piece. So if you can come up with like a ninja list, the best list possible, this is how I started with direct mail. And say you get like 1,000 to 3,000 people. You just divide it in half. So if you were to do 2,000 people, it's going to cost you 1,000 a mailing. But remember, it costs you $1,000. If you got one or two deals out of that and you just got 10 grand a deal, or say they were 15 and you got 30 grand, that's a 30 times return on your money, okay? So the, consist the, the key aspect in direct mail, if you want to learn more, we teach it at freewholesaling.com. I have an entire course built in there, is I always, the minimum starting out with inexperience is you want to three times your return on direct mail, okay? That's the bare minimum. Why? Because it usually takes one quarter, three months to get a return on direct mail. So if direct mail cannot pay for itself within three months, you're either doing something terribly wrong or you don't know how to do it. That's why we created MailingMastery.com inside of FreeHolesling.com. 
So yeah. if you guys want to understand more mechanics about it, but like a lot of people just boohoo direct mail, I'm telling you, whatever you spend three times return and when you get good at it, you're going to turn it up to yeah. eight to 12 times the return. So in the beginning, we don't have the experience. You just want to get leads that you can convert. And then if you do it within one quarter, three months, so you understand when you get to that level, you want to do direct mail. But guys, it costs money, but it's not as expensive as you think it is because it is inbound, which is convenient yeah. for you guys that are working. Answer your phones live. And remember, if you just did a thousand dollar investment and think about it, if you could make 15 or 30 grand, that's a good return. And so even if you went a few months without a deal, but the problem with the direct mail and I'll let it go is people want a one hit wonder. They want to do one mailing and they want oh, to yeah. harvest five deals. It doesn't work that way. I've been doing it 20 years plus. I have never missed on it. Do I have bad months? Yes. I never have bad quarters and I never have bad years. No, so it, you just got to understand that with direct mail. And that's why we don't promote direct mail to beginners because we need to get you to your first deal. I don't want to frustrate you your first three months. But I do want to explain to everybody how direct mail. Some people get the first deal through direct mail, right? Like I'm not going to blame Direct them. mail is extremely convenient. And honestly, yeah. for here, so you guys, full disclosure on the, the paid gurus, they all want you to do direct mail. You know why? It's easy. Because it's easy and like you get your first deal. Once you get your first deal, they're off your back. And then you're hooked with direct mail. Now, I got hooked on direct mail. It took me years to learn all these other tactics, the government list and stuff like that. And in my opinion, we're much better when you first start out whole thing. And then once you get some money, you get the skill sets to talk to people, then you can really be good at direct mail. And that's why we don't want you completely starting out. But listen, if you got the budget with it and you have the confidence to talk to people, you can do it. You're looking for a three times return. People ask me all the time, if I put an X amount on direct mail, what should I expect in the beginning? Three times, and that's the bare minimum. Two times, you'll go broke. You'll go broke. Yeah. So you got to be patient three months. I agree. So really, guys, everything we do teach, just use the methods we teach at freerolesting.com. The reason why I say this is because I don't like repeating myself like insane amount of times on like multiple videos a week, right? So like, yes, I'll sometimes do a video just re-showing you for this year, this month, what's working and what's – but like – when I tell you guys how to do direct mail, it's like it hasn't changed in the past year. So our tutorial on direct mail is still at It's in the yeah. We literally made a whole course on it just because every, the only way to learn direct mail besides when we released Mailing Mastery was what? The four or $5,000 course. So like, let's just give it out for free. So it's the number one direct mail course in the country, like fivefold. Yeah. Uh, and freerolesting.com is the largest wholesaling course Membership, active members, it's insane. Um, but yeah, because it works. Everything yeah, we do works. works. Like we give you real practical advice on how to get your deal because I know what it feels like to struggle out there. And honestly, I'm not a paid guru. I like we got to change how we do this. We want you guys to go out and get deals. Yeah. So let's continue. We we just guys use the free methods we teach at freerolesting.com. You'll be good to go. So. The question is, what do I have to do? So I know the list, I know the marketing, I know where to do, I know where to learn, I know I gotta go to freelancing.com, like I know all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. What are the numbers? Like, what do I have to do, right? What's the what's the huddle? What's the game plan? I've always found in wholesaling real estate, get your first deal. Your goal should do a thousand contacts a month, and that's a lot. It is. That should be a goal. I want a thousand hellos. I know that's a lot, but I'm telling you, that should be the main goal. And you really look at it like you know five weeks into a month. If you really look at it, 200 contacts, 200 divided by what six? So let's do 30, right? Let, let's get crazy, okay? This is the only math I figured out from school. Oh my gosh! And it's only so a thousand divided by 30. 33 hellos a day, 34 hellos a day, right? That's not insane, right? But 34 hellos conversations, just contacts with a really mo really motivated list, hopefully a government list or a probate, you do a thousand, you'll get a deal, okay? Because a thousand of those contacts will equate on average to 10 to 20 appointments. And on 10 to, tw 10 to 20 appointments, I don't care how nervous you are, I don't care how much you stumble, I don't care how uh, like young you are, out of 10 appointments, you're gonna find one, right? Like, you're gonna down. find one. And if it's a really motivated list, and they agree to go with you, even if you're being very nervous, you're st it's gonna be a deal all day, right? I think of my first deal, how nervous energy I had, right? And the thing is, once you have 10 to 10, 10 to 20 points, you're gonna get a deal out of that, right? And 
the honest truth is out of 10 appointments, you should make 10 offers or let's say 20. So the thing is you make 10 offers a month. 1% of those contacts are going to be a deal. And that's all you need. You okay. need to convert 1% of the people that say hello. And I'm going to share a tip with you guys. If you're nervous when you're first making these offers, the all human beings have a tendency to over talk when they're nervous. Yeah. So you got to do the opposite. So when you make your offer, just shut your mouth and let them respond. If you fill that gap, it's going to cost you a fortune. Ask me how I know this because this is how I struggled my first year doing it. And I still did very well. But when you guys make your offer and you're nervous, make the offer and then quietly sit back. Remember, it's, it's, it's a dance. It's a volleyball game. You serve them. you got to let them serve you back. If you keep jumping over the net trying to help them out, you're never going to get a response from them. So when it's silent, awkward, just be quiet. Remember, two ears, one mouth. If we just use the tools that are naturally given to us by God, we'll do just fine. No, I'm telling you guys, it, I want to fire it's you. literally <laughs> 10 offers a month. So the people watching this, to get your first deal, 10 offers a month. Just focus on that. You'll be, you'll be Gucci. Be good to go, you know? Gucci. One deal should be five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. That's pretty much it, right? And so how do we scale that up, right? So like, how do we go from that to do 10 deals a month, right? That seems like it's all... Here's the, the coolest part about going from one deal. If you can consistently do that every single month, you'll get a deal a month. Get five to 10K a month. Pretty easy, right? Like, mm -hmm. not easy, but like, it's simple, the concept of what you have to do. How do you get, how do you work out really well? Eat, I don't know, 1,800 calories. Make sure 1,000 of those calories are protein and then work out five days a week without, with this workout, right? Like, it's pretty simple. It's kind of, not calling it boring, but like, if you want to get jacked, your day should be pretty boring. Like you eat the same thing, you work out the same thing. Like it gets kind of boring. Same with wholesaling to a point like they drive for boring. dollars, you call the same list, you do it over and over. But like not everyone wants to do it. But when you start doing deals, it gets exciting stuff. But like one deal should be about five to 10K. And just understanding that you're good to go. I just, I think so many wholesalers get so confused on that. So how do I scale this up, right? The point here is you pour that money you're getting on your initial deals into paid marketing, not the free mar paid marketing. And that's really, the reason why paid marketing works so well is because you leverage your time. And that's how every business is run. You think Elon Musk is uh, building the cars from scratch in, in a factory? No, he's leveraging his time to pay someone to do that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like you look at every big business, you look at a grocery store, they're paying a bag boy to bag the groceries. So the boss is not, like, it's all leveraging time. And really, you pay time for people to do work for you and you make money arbitrage off of that. Same thing with paid marketing, right? So with paid marketing, you pour the money you're making on your deals into that while keeping at the current pace. So if you're doing your free stuff, keep doing that. Keep doing the same contacts. Once you, you'll get more leads. You'll do more appointments just on the same effort. You should easily 3x your results by just using a dialer, SMS text blasting the same list you're pulling, or just doing direct mail on top of that, or like anything, you will easily get the three deals a month. Yeah. I say triple, it's very easy to triple it. You just pour it in on easier softwares to leverage out your time. You're good to go. It's like um, being a delivery boy uh, and you're doing it on foot. Once you get a bike, you're gonna be able to do the same amount of work and do it three times better. Yeah, but it was, some of the problems is a lot of the, the, the paid gurus that, get, that try to teach you wholesaling oh, yeah. is you get hooked on all the paid services right off the yeah. bat because they want you to have instant success. And then most people struggle for years to go, well, that's a free service, it's not gonna work. It's actually the opposite. If you can make it work off of a free service, imagine what you can do with a paid service. Yeah. And this business has been taught the opposite forever because they're like, oh, you don't need to do all that stuff. The problem is you don't wanna be practicing on your paid service because it gets expensive. And that's yeah. where, I can't tell you how many people have come to us and like, oh, not only did I pay this guru five or 10 grand, I paid another 20 grand in marketing, but I got one deal and they had to give me a testimonial. I'm like, well, you lost your butt. Yeah. And then they're like, how do I keep this going without going broke in the marketing? So you gotta find a balance between the two. Nobody ever wants to talk about this stuff. It's the truth. I actually started out, I had a healthy combo when I started out, thank God. Because once you do like a paid service and you get a few deals on it, 
it, it's like using a uh, it, it's like using an Uber driver having you picking up, taking you everywhere, as opposed to you driving yourself everywhere. Yeah. You get used to it and you get addicted to it until you run out of money and you go, you know what? I gotta be. So it's it's a battle between using resources and using your own resourcefulness. And if you can hack into both of them, this is how you get to 10 deals a month. But some people just get hooked on free. It's all I can yeah. do. It's all I know. I'm telling you, I can take someone who can master the free, ser paid ser the free services like the government list and easily teach them the paid ones. If I do it the other way, it's usually a complete disaster. The people that hired a guru did nothing but direct mail or 100% cold calling. When I go, listen, go get this list, pull this probate. And they're like, I don't know how to do that. All of a sudden, I'm like, I don't understand how you not know how to do it. So resources versus resourcefulness, that's what we're talking about. So that, that's what it's all about. So we've got three deals there. How do we bring this up, right? All you got to do to go from three to five, I'm not saying it's easy. It, it, it is work. But really, increase the marketing and fire yourself. Once you fire yourself, what does it mean? Like, get some VAs to start doing some of the tasks you're doing. Cold calling, SMS. Maybe even a junior acquisitions person, right? To kind mm -hmm. of do some follow up calls. We're like, start firing yourself so they don't have to do as much work. And then you'll be able to spend more time on appointments, which is really what you got to be focusing on until you get somebody like that. And then, really, how do you double that? You double that list from there by just spending more, increasing the amount of deals you're doing, increasing the leads by just doing bigger lists, increase the, lower the equity on your lists, make it bigger, pull every single list imaginable. Start drawing for dollars more, hire drawing for dollars people, hire an acquisitions person to go on appointments for you. Because once maybe on it, like, right, but like if you're doing 10 deals a month, if you really look at the numbers, that's like it's roughly 60, 100 appointments. That's like three appointments a day. And if you're doing 25 working hours, that's four appointments a day. You don't want to be doing that. But if you have two acquisitions people, that's two appointments a day. That's actually very manageable. Yeah. So 10 deals, you're going to have to fire yourself. You're going to have to have employees. And yes, it costs, they, they cost money. They do. And no one ever talks about this, about doing 10 deals. And I'll straight up tell you, no one in a guru seminar, no one like talking everywhere. Remember guys, we're on a big fancy stage right now in our suits. No one will ever mention this. You go to any event about what scaling is about. The first month or two of scaling, you will work harder and you will make less money. That is the honest truth about hiring employees, especially in wholesaling. You will... Work harder than you ever have in your life, and you will make less money because they do not pay off until the third or fourth month, right? Yeah, you, that, it's actually going to mess with your mind. So it's a bit it, of a mindset is. training because and, – and this isn't just specific to wholesaling any business. For you to scale – like think about like Tesla sets up factories all over the world to create these cars. You guys realize they lost money for the first 15 years? Yeah. I, I mean, think about the insanity of that. So – Wholesaling is not as extreme as that, but you have to take a few steps back to move forward. And then the biggest thing is when we talk about doing the employee stuff is we talk about consistency when you're working for yourself. It's even more important when you have employees. Yeah, and that's the truth. So you got to look at it. You got to double your marketing. You got to keep it going up there. And then really, once you get the employees out, like you're at like us working five, 10 hours a week, like guys, we have people talking to sellers today, doing like... I don't have to do it following up and send direction. I don't do like, we're just chilling, you know, like we're just chilling because but, but here's the difference yeah. with like, like employees is so many of these, these I mean, pay gurus say hire this and hire that where well, you have no experience. You don't even know how it works yourself. Yeah. I'm a huge advocate of figuring it out yourself, either you, a single operator or you and your partner and go through the journey. I told everyone, if you could go two years through the journey, you can hire anybody to do anything. Then you just have to focus on scalability and leadership. When we hired people to do bandit signs for us recently, yeah, who taught them how to do that? I, I, I taught them how to do the bandit signs, how to answer them. Like you did a lot of the training in the direct mail, but like it's like what are skill? Like I usually train the cold callers, yeah. not you, but like you train the acquisitions really well. I train the like we're pretty good at acquisitions together, but like. It's what your skill set, right? Like, I'll teach the cold calling because I'm very good at it. Mm -hmm. You'll do the dispo, and like, think, like, because you're really good at that. Like, it just, guys, it, it's based on your skill sets, but I think so many people get that confused too. But just understand that, and uh, you'll do it well. So, look at the numbers. You do 10 deals a month, right? Really, this is conservative, but 10,000 contacts, it should be a lot more. But 10,000 contacts, 
and really, I would say 75, 150 appointments. It's it, depending if you're doing virtual appointments, though, right? Like, mm-hmm. this is bigger scaling stuff, but like, that's a lot of appointments and that's a lot of offers. And really, if you're doing FISBOs, it's going to be a little more. 75, 100 offers, uh, even up to 200 offers, I'd say 2% will be offered. And the point is, you're talking to so many more leads, you're just going to blankly, just blatantly offer more, right? And they're going to be less motivated the more deal, the more leads you pull, the less motivated the average person is going to be, right? Mm-hmm. So you're just going to have to offer more and see, kind of, I hate to say it, like, see what sticks, right? Yeah. Throw spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks, right? And you'll see pretty often that you, your, um, your ROI per lead is going to go down, but you're going to make more money overall in the business. That, that, that's part of the, it's the equation. The quantity thing. Like, it's just so quantity, you, yeah. Yeah. It's so, but you can afford to take slimmer deals to because you have more of a marketing machine going. And in the beginning, we teach you to try to harvest really anything in the beginning. If it make five, 10 grand, I've seen some of you guys make like a couple grand. Honestly, whatever, I believe your first deal is the one that really yeah. um, creates your, it's just like an aha moment. And if it, anybody on this live can say, when you got your first deal, it kind of proves to yourself that this works. And then, listen, we all say we're in it 100, 110%. The reality is, till your first deal is, you have to go solely on faith. And when you get that first yeah. deal, you're like, I knew it. I knew it. It's like the greatest feeling. It's better than any type of drug or anything you could ever be exposed to in life. And you're like, how can I bottle that? How can I do that over and over again? So it's like, it, so some of you, like, you get, you feel good naturally after you work out. Some people feel good when they, they go in the, the pool, whatever it is. I'm telling you, when you do that first deal, guys, you'll see it. But you've got to believe in it. It's a crazy, you've got to believe into it to get to your first deal because nobody starts out with one deal the day you're born. So getting that first deal is like the one thing that just, I knew when I got my first deal, I, I just, I went crazy. It was like, that's it. I showed it. I knew it would work. And it was a, kind of an I told you so moment to everybody that doubted me. And then after yeah. now, like, I don't even look back. It's like, guys, that's what it takes to get 10 deals a month. Uh, I think we condense it as well as you can condense it. Um, really, we got the people. So Reggie's out here. Let's see, Reggie. And I'm committed to my first wholesale deal by January 1st, 2023. Cool. I love it. Guys, I'd love to see that because... Love see love seeing people make that commitment to themselves. Is that water not good? That's okay. I've never heard of this brand. Thurster. Thurster? Yeah. I think they just go in the bathroom and fill it up here in the back of the hotel. But... Thurster. It's a Florida thing. Thurster. I don't know. You know the fact. I this this my... is how old I am. The thought that you could sell a bottle of water like this for two bucks. What do you think it costs to make this stuff? Like oh, oh. maybe what, three, four cents to do the plastic? And then God only knows where the water comes from. They don't even tell you where it comes from. Oh, they'll tell you. I don't want to. Niagara. All right. So, Niagara. guys, yeah, the, the truth is in wholesaling real estate, it all comes down to the commitment you're taking, everything like that. But it's really about what you're doing, right? And I think so many people, today's the day they're making that commitment. I love seeing that, right? Um, but yeah. Let's see some of the. I've got some troll comments. Uh, I love some of the people trolling awesome. us. Let, let me, what do we got? The guy on the left is on Coke. That's, that's a good. That's actually uh, a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Perfect. So here's the thing. I'm high on wholesaling. I think you're talking about me because I'm on the left here, on the on the screen. All right, because because you're jacked up and you're excited. Here's the thing, guys. I'm super excited about this business. All right, I've done one drug my entire life. Okay. I get super amped up for you guys because this is wholesaling real estate. This is. This is not my life. Plus, he's younger than I am. I'm younger, but I've been up since like 5:30. I'm, I'm going crazy. Uh, but like, I should is be. Is this wedding getting you excited? That's like, I guess it's exciting. I, I'll say it on air first. Fine. But guys, <laughs> it's not just my life on the line for these lives because it's not. Like, I, I make enough money. You make enough. We make enough money in wholesaling. Yeah. We don't need to like. Do you rather have somebody boring and mundane no, no. and just like it's go not through? That. Let's go through module number one. No, it's not that. It's. Your, your life is on the line. The people watching me, they put their faith and trust into us. Yeah. How can I be excited? We have an opportunity for everyone to change their life. Absolutely for free. Change it. Why aren't you excited? And let me ask one thing to Alejandro before I'll take him off. And Maybe I don't block him. Maybe I'm nice today. Yeah. Maybe I'm nice. Alejandro, if you haven't woken up this morning, 
and everyone in your family is alive, you're safe, you're healthy, everybody you love is healthy. How aren't you excited to be just, how aren't you jacked up? You get to live another day, you get to experience this thing called life, and you go out here and live your dreams and actually live. I don't, like, you wake up every day, every day is a gift. If you can't wake up like that and be excited every single day to wake up, there's nothing more that can get excited, guys. Huh. There's always somebody that had a worse day than you, yeah. and you gotta understand that. So, why am I excited every single day? I get to live another day in my life. I get to spend time with my family. I get to live the life of your dreams. And I get to help you guys live the life of your dreams. And also, most importantly, the most important thing of why I'm excited, I get to flex on a guru. And honestly, I love doing it. Yeah. It's just, it's a hobby of mine. Flexing on a guru, showing them gurus who's boss, and just dunking on gurus. It's just, it's fun. You know, hey, guys, have you ever played high school and you don't, like, you absolutely destroy the rival team? It's just a fun thing to do. It's a hobby. So, yes, y'all might be hating on me that I'm just dunking on gurus, but it's fun. I really enjoy dunking on gurus. And you know what? If that's a problem, sue me. So, oh, gurus, please don't try to sue me because I don't want to go to court for all the stupid stuff. But Well, Discovery would be fun, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. right, let's not get into that. But, yeah, guys, so uh, next question. Are you an only child, Zach? I am not an only child. If I was an only child, I'd probably be a guru. Because I'd feel entitled, but no, I got a sister. She's amazing. Um, pull her swing by. She ain't coming by though. Hi, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. She's probably watching this right now. Um, I think she's in. Uh, she's in your room. No, uh, I. I, uh, I decided to have two kids. One to entertain the other one, and uh, you're, you're treating like a dog. Like a dog. The number of kids, like a cat. Well, it's, you need one to entertain the other. Oh one. no, no. I think. Listen. The number of kids like people decide to have is so random and small. Why does one person have ten, and one person have one? It's just it's. I don't know. Like that's a good question. I, I think you just it's just kind of do it by feel. I had no oh, idea. All right. What's what's the M word? Let's go to the next one. All right. What's the next one? The next one is what's the M word? M word is marketing. Uh, talking to like having conversations with sellers, right? So I get this asked all the time. Like, do you have a course? The course is free. Free, 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 wholesaling.com. It's on sense. sale today, isn't it? Yeah, it's half off today. Um, zero, do zero dollars from zero dollars. I just burp on the stream. Oh, Lord. Whatever. Uh, Freewholesaling.com. Let me make that white. Wait, wait. Make it black. All right. There you go. Just go to freewholesaling.com and uh, hop on. It's our free real estate wholesaling course. We're going to teach you guys how to wholesale real estate all day, every single day. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? Zach, do you use contracts? So again, guys, at freelancing.com, we do have our free contracts for you guys to be using. Mm -hmm. It's free, costs literally no money at all, and it's a free wholesaling contract. I don't know what else you guys want. You know, it's a free wholesaling contract. Now, I'll if you want me to charge you for the contract, bring it to charity or something. But like, I don't want your money. All right, uh, Vivian, love seeing this. I'm in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. I got my first deal under my belt. Does anybody in Texas want to team up and get consistent deals and dedicated? Shout out to Vivian. Uh, check out Vivian. Hopefully, you can reach her on Facebook. But uh, shout out to her getting her first deal under contract. That's, That's always awesome. motivational. It's always exciting. Uh, I absolutely love seeing stuff like that. So shout out to her. Uh, Caleb's got something funny. Do you know DJ Khaled? Yes. Do you know his latest uh, moniker? No. All right. So he has something like this. So Caleb's saying this. Caleb knows what I'm saying. Shout out to Caleb and Ryan. Uh, they're absolutely amazing. You talk to them. Okay. Uh, they're they're up in. Uh, no, no, I remember the names. In, yeah. In Michigan. Yes. Uh, power couple. Um, they didn't believe in Rick and Zach, but God did. And uh, so DJ Khaled says uh, says they didn't believe in us, and then everyone says, but God did, and that's the thing. So they didn't believe in us, but God did. Yeah. And that's the point, you know. So. They didn't believe in us. The gurus didn't. The haters didn't, right? Well, I, I, I was told from God day did. one. What, <laughs> I remember the days of like running it. They're like, what are you doing? I didn't. By the way, I didn't ask anybody what I was doing. We just did it. And then I remember like, you're nuts what you and your son are doing. It, it's going to fail miserably. And like, how uh, long have you been doing that? Now I just kind of laugh. It's just like. The same people saying me, Zach, do not give stuff for free. That's the stupidest thing ever. Are asking to go on this uh, on the YouTube and be on my pod on, on the podcast, right? They're honestly asking, literally asking us. Yeah. 
The same people that said we wouldn't do same it. Same people. Can we go on your podcast now? This it'll never work. I'm like, well, I. And then I remember telling her, I don't really need the coaching money. Like, what? What do you guys? I know we use that coaching money to buy all our deals. I'm like, I, I thought you guys just wholesale property. So it's. Listen, this we're going to do what we do. I do, like when you stop caring what other people. Think, the only thing I care about is like what you guys want, what yeah. you need, and I. The frustration level in the wholesaling community is it's it's at an all time high because you guys are just promised everything for a price and most of you for the most part are completely undelivered undelivered meaning you paid somebody and you're still trying to figure this how how to make it work and that's the problem is there is no magic pill in wholesaling it's hard work it it's just committing to it and getting it done and if you think you're going to pay someone five or ten grand to get you to the front of the line, you're kidding me. My favorite one is, uh, the, well, they're going to make, make me accountable. Hey, newsflash, nobody can make you accountable except yourself. Yeah. And for people to have true breakthroughs in life, I don't care if it's spiritually, physically, or business-wise, the number one thing people have to do is you have to assess your current situation, you have to be honest, and then you have to be accountable, and then you have to have an action plan. Most guru courses only fix one or two of those pieces. Yeah. They're by design. So you keep buying and get addicted to what you're doing. And listen, I do have a problem with it because most of them are pep rallies. And in the end, they're the ones who win. You guys don't. They have a 95% failure ratio. This is why we made the change. That's it, right? Uh, next couple questions here. How do I get these? Con or, or you talked to freelancing.com. Silver Oak REI. Rick and Zach started in June. I worked my I worked my way to a few deals. Congratulations! But it's been a while since my last closing, a month or so. Should I start over from scratch, or being employed, uh, or being employing some systems? So my honest advice for you, starting out, if you've done some deals, I want to know a little more. Maybe hop on the one on one. So wholesaling houses is for real. Uh, that's where you hop on. Talk to us one on one. Really, I want to figure out how you got those few deals. Were they direct mail? or are they cold calling a government list, right? Were they text blasting a pre I wanna know what they were. My honest advice is whatever was working in the past, double down on that, and that'll probably lead, lead you to doing more deals. Uh, it's always when you try new things, and yeah. like that's when things get a little iffy, right? It's just like fishing. You're, if you caught fish in a certain pond, and you go leave to find other fish, yeah. I guarantee if you just go back and did what you did in that original pond, it will probably work, but we got shiny object syndrome. Like so many times, if you guys have success doing certain tactics and it worked, especially in the beginning, just keep go all in and go deep in it. If you spread yourself too thin, you try nine different marketing channels, you're going to be a jack of all trades and you're not going to make any money. So you want to master one thing and then just keep adding to it and do it that. So I, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just go back to what was working and have an honest conversation with yourself. What did I do to get those deals? Like truly, what did I do? And how can I duplicate that exact same success? Yeah, and uh, I agree. Paul says, what if your population is over 200,000 is only? The population in my city is only 200,000 to make millions of dollars. So uh, it's, uh, I, I, you know what? Just make a, make a couple hundred thousand a month, deal with it, suffer, and then maybe go virtual. That's my advice for you guys. I'm just kidding, Paul, that's plenty of people. Make a ton of money doing that. Yeah, so don't I, don't. We tell you at least fifty thousand or more. Like, but like a hundred thousand's a great, great starting point. So, um, and there's some advantages to smaller um, populations too. Yeah, Jalen says, "Are y'all answering questions right now?" I will answer that question by saying, "Yes." yes. <laughs> Thanks for asking your question. On to the next one. Well, we'll put you on the bottom of the list. Just kidding. Now, now we can ask more questions. But yeah, that, that's really it. Let's do a couple more questions. Let's do one more, and then we'll go into the one-on-ones. Uh, so uh, Facebook user, that's a big question right here. Let's make this one smaller. Hold on. Uh, I got my first property under contract, and I'm having a hard time finding a buyer at the moment. I posted on the real estate investing group for my city, and some people showed up and told me numbers make sense, but it's too big of a project for them. Since it's a gut job, I'm currently calling all cost sales in my city. That's probably going to be your best bet. I would co-call the four rents from there. But I think the cash sales, you already know what you're doing. So I'd probably just stay on that. Yeah, you, you got it. Like, guys, cash buyers have changed their criteria, especially on big projects. 
Um, for the last three years, the the returns they expected were small because there was they were guaranteed to sell them now. It's not as guaranteed, so they want a higher return. So the other thing you want to do is get intel from your cash buyers and just talk to them. And listen, wholesaling is a constant, it's a constant dance of like one day I'm working more with buyers, the next market I'm working with sellers, and you have to adapt and change. The, the, wholesaling is not like this, but here's the good news is you're buying for today. You're not buying. You got to understand your cash buyers, often they're buying the property for six to 12 months down the road. Now, you guys follow the, the news. They came out with another rate increase, which was expected at 75 basis points. Today? Yes. Oh, but wow. I didn't know that. Powell said the rates going forward will probably be substantially less. So some people are going to read into like, okay, well, the, the, uh, we're getting ready to peak on interest rates. We have no idea. But I promise you, your, your cash buyers are going to take like this into consideration. Why? Because people, they're going to get a mortgage for the house as they completely um, renovate. Um, they're going to pay more. So we're probably going to, we're at 7.4. So this will push it to probably close to 8 but it looks like we're going to stay it's already at eight, pretty much. It's like 7.4. So add that 0. 0.75, oh, however wow. it equates to it. And that's going to put you at eight. But here's the good news. I don't think we're going to go over like eight, eight and a half, maybe 8.75. A lot of people are calling for double digits, which was scaring oh, a lot yeah, of people. Oh, you're right, seven and a half. So um, I think we're going to stay well below the nine. So here's how I look at it. Like eventually cash buyers are going to go, okay, I think we've peaked. And then they'll still get more aggressive in their buying. The only way you find out this information is you have to have conversations with cash buyers. You guys have been taught for the last really 10 years, just treat cash buyers like a number and nothing else because they're a dime a dozen. Well, they're not a dime a dozen. Yeah. They're not even close to a dime a dozen. It's, it's more like a dime per hundred. So it's a different formula. So go back, uh, you retarget your list and, you have to get intel from your cash buyers just like you get intel from your sellers. And guys, I don't need to tell you with all this market news of negativity, this is easy to sit in front of your um, sellers because the news is doing the dirty work for you. And as you get into the holiday seasons and like all of uh, the next year, the, the damage is done with there. So before people would wait to take action because they felt they'd get a higher price. Yeah. You're in the opposite thing. So take advantage of it. Say, listen, let me think about a couple months. If you didn't have that upfront conversation, go, listen, I'll come back, but my offer's not going to be the same. It's, it's probably going to be substantially lower. They're like, why? And then they start looking at all the news and the self-doubt circulates. The truth is, if you come back in two or three months, you will have a lower offer. It is not a bluff. It is the flat out truth. And you need to let your sellers know that. But remember, we're not here to tell them how bad the market is. Let them substantiate that because you trying to do that is trying to drag a horse to drink water. Yeah. At some point, they have to get thirsty. And when they get thirsty, meaning they get motivated, thirsty means motivation is, then you can have a constructive conversation to negotiate a great wholesale deal. I agree. So uh, that's a good question though. So let's do some one-on-ones right now. I uh, want to hop on some people. So how do I hop on the one-on-ones? How do I join it? What do I do? All you got to do is join the Facebook group, Wholesaling Houses For Real. So let me pop that up in the comments. So all you got to do is I put that on there. Where is it? Right here. Just go to www.facebook.com slash group slash wholesaling houses for real. And that's all you got to do. So let me share my screen. And uh, it's right here. Wholesaling houses for real. No gurus, no selling, just value. And uh, just click here on the featured. And on the top here, you can hop on, watch here. And then you can join here on StreamYard. StreamYard link's on there. Boom, hop it on, talk to us one-on-one, -on -one, and we'll have a conversation with you. Answer your questions and help you out. So let's get the first one on here. Chevelle. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hi, it's going well. How are you? We're blessed. What's awesome, up? Awesome, man. What's going on? That's good. Um, okay, so you remember I was telling you about the, the seller who – um, she wanted, she was v very motivated. Um, the house what first, what, what it belonged to her brother, then it belonged to her mom. Her brother died, then her mom, she's in hospice and she she doesn't live in the state. She wants to get rid of the house and everything like that. So 
Um, I made the offer, like I told you, the forty thousand. I was supposed to call her back, like you said, and um, and to lower it to thirty five. But she had other um, investors who were really like hounding this lady, and so I was like, okay, I I'm, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it because, you know they were just like all over her. So when it all boiled down to it, the person offered $5,000 more and she actually went with the other person. And so I, I mean, I did, I did the best I could as far as like building rapport with her. And um, I, I did let her know that, you know, we will pay the, co- the closing costs and um, we're going to put the $100 um, earnest money deposit and everything. So um, I guess I wanted to, I want to know what could, what, is there anything that I could have done to prevent that from happening? I yeah. didn't want to offer. Yeah, $5, obviously. $5. I didn't want to offer. Easy. Yeah. Chevelle, this is really easy. What? Sellers decide to go with somebody based on certainty and confidence, right? Mm-hmm. That's number one. They were probably more certain than you and they were probably more confident than you. That's not, that's not a dig, that's, not, that's just the truth. Now, number two, most okay. important part, when anybody asks, because I've been on the receiving end and the other end of this, mm-hmm. how did this person get a deal and not me? Usually, um, usually the other person is asking that, and it's always the, just, it's literally one thing. It's not even the confidence thing. That person got in front of the seller and was able to get a contract signed. Speed, you lost because of speed. Okay. That was it. Speed okay. and certainty, um, usually, Listen, if it's purely on price, you'll never win. No. Like, because that, that's where people go to MLS and realtors. But in these situations, it, it definitely, he's correct on it. Speed and like certainty with it flowing. And the minute mm-hmm. it starts getting chopped up, I always look at it like when I have other investors, I yeah. never let it rattle me or bother me. And I never switch how I operate based on them. Now, I know that speed's going to beat out most of the others. And if you have to get in line with them, it's a pain in the butt. Now, here's the good news is there's no guarantee they're going to be able to close on it. So keep it on a positive note. I've Sometimes we all lose out on deals. I, I've never met a wholesaler that did not get a deal. Well, let me ask like a question. Accepted. Yeah. Did you condition the seller before you met with them? I... Uh, I, I didn't. No, that's oh, yeah. not. So I that's part. Know. That's part of the certainty. Yeah, and it, it definitely helps out the speed because yeah. here's what happens. Like guys, the reality of wholesaling is seventy five percent of wholesalers will stall. Not seventy five percent of sellers will stall you if you let them. What do I mean by that? Yeah, it's a huge decision for them. Like they're not used. Like it's usually their biggest asset they're selling. So. What do you do when you get overwhelmed? Have you ever got overwhelmed with a decision, especially financial, personally? Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? Freak out. You sleep on it. Let me think about it. Let me talk to this person. Let me talk to my mom, my dad, my boyfriend, my girl, whatever it is. And that's what you naturally do because it's easier at the time when you're stressed about something, it's easier not to make a decision on it because it doesn't hurt as much. And that's what happens, though, even though they need to sell it. So do you understand how the upfront um, agreement goes? Have you tried yes, it? I, I did it with the, sec- the, the second seller that I'm about to tell you guys about, okay. which was a, a much better outcome. So um, I'm just telling you, like doing that, the reason why we teach you guys this, do you know how many sellers I botched and screwed up? Probably millions of dollars of deals. And it took me years to put this together. And I finally taught it to him. I'm just like, listen, uh, before you go in, and then he got caught in the maybe land. And that's how we go, listen, we have to come up with a systematic way to try to prevent this. It doesn't prevent it 100%, but it knocks out about 85% of the crap you put up at the end because you make that person accountable. You make them give an agreement. And you know when two people know something to be true and you call them on it, they can't run and hide on you. And for that reason alone, you just kind of walk through it. And by the way, you won't get 100% of the deal. Like sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes they don't connect with you. Sometimes it does just come down to money with people. But often when I get outbidded on a deal, mm-hmm. 
sometimes uh, other investors, they get hyper aggressive. They go, okay, well, they offered you 30. I'll give you 35. And they don't think about their numbers. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they can't make that 35 work. And keep in mind, what's going on in the market right now with real estate prices? They're going down. They're going down. So this could backfire yeah. on them and it could open a back door for you. So I was still, you wish them the I best. Mean and then you follow up in two weeks or a week, whatever you want to do with them and see if that deal goes through. Yeah. She told, she texts me and she's like, Chevelle, if the deal falls through, I'm going to give you a call. And if the deal falls through, you are going to pay a substantially lower price. I'm just yeah. telling you, because keep in mind, here's what happens when somebody puts on a contract for 35, how much did you offer her? 30? At 40. 40. And they okay. offer her 45. Okay. So whatever number they put it on, if it doesn't work and stick, guess what? Now you have data, what you can't buy it for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why would you give her the same contract price if you know it didn't work out and the contract fell through? It's the perfect opportunity for you to get a price reduction and kind of some justification for what you're doing. But honestly, I'd rather you set the price right. When the market was going like crazy up, we used to sit back and wait because people would overbid all the time. So now they're overbidding because they're using old school tactics. Mm -hmm. Some of these deals are going to come back to you. So just like, don't burn your bridge as like as much as you want to, like you get really ticked off because you put in a lot of time, emotion, and it hurts a little bit. And that's natural. That's why once you have more quantity and understand if you're working with 10 sellers, a certain amount of them are just, they're going to do this to you. So you do yeah. everything you can to prevent it. So tell us about the second one. See how that one went. Okay, so this one is really good. He he built. The, the, here's the issue. He built started building the house, and then he he hurt his back, and he used the rest of the money that he was supposed to use to build the house to live on. Okay. So the house is not finished. He said that it would take maybe forty thousand to. Fifty thousand dollars to finish the house, okay. but he doesn't. He wants he he has it listed for one sixty five, and he said that the lowest that he could come down is one forty, because he said if he goes any lower, he's gonna be losing money. So I don't really think it's a good it's a good deal. One forty because of the equity he has, or because of what he bought it for. No, no, no. He he own, he owns it, and it's on three acres of land. So he owns the land and owns the the house. But the how he spent the money. He started building the house, right? He got hurt, and he couldn't finish building it. And the money that he was supposed to take to buy materials and finish building the house, he spent all of that money. So now he wants to just sell this half finished house. Is this so? If he sells it for the offer you gave him, he's not losing money; he's gaining money. It's not your fault that he's in the situation. Yeah. And he's trying to put that on you. You know, okay. you have to pay me more because I feel bad because I me me messed up. Uh-uh. That's not how it works. Yeah. So, it's not like, well, I'll let you go ahead, yeah. but it's, it's not like, hey, I owe 50K on this house. I need to get 50 just so I can get out of this thing. Mm -hmm. It's not that. So right? is there a mortgage on the house? No, he doesn't okay. have a, a mortgage. So keep in mind, too, like I sometimes when people do this, um, I get this all the time. I need uh, I need to get $100,000 from the proceeds of sales so I can pay for my sister's operation and I can put my mom in the retirement home. And we go to Disney. And it's like, so <laughs> understanding, it's like, I get it. And that what it, what they're really telling you, this is my wish. And okay. so you got to use a technique when some people get like divided on that. Number one, first of all, if they don't have a, a, a mortgage restricting them for that, Number one, that's not your problem because the market's always going to yeah. do what? They're going to evaluate. They're going to evaluate the deal based on the property, not on someone's personal situation. So I always tell people, listen, I can appreciate that, and I want you to take care of your mom and so and so, but we need to see what the house can afford. Mm. And you just okay. kind of bring it back center, like because I can't fund all this. I want. I I'll see what the house can afford to help you out, but at the end of the day. No matter who he sells it with, if it's on market, off market, people are going to look at the house, look at the amount of work they do, and then they're going to write an offer based on that. They don't care about his personal situation. And not it's not that you don't care, but you can't let it affect your offer because it doesn't make sense. So um, 
no matter what, whoever makes an offer on that, they're all going to have the same thought process. They're like, okay, well, I get it. You had, that's like saying, hey, Zach, I got $50,000 and I'm going to build out this custom kitchen. And then I got distracted and I bought this nice new um, Chevrolet Camaro. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I still need the same price yeah. here. Like, so I can drive away with my Camaro. You can't drive away with the car and get that too. So you can't have your cake. What's it? What do they call it? You can't have you can't your, your cake and eat it too. I love cake. Um, I have some cake tomorrow. Wedding, yeah. So it's, listen, you, you, like people, stories like that, you have to show empathy and care. But like <laughs> when you're writing numbers, you can't even consider that stuff because yeah. when you go to sell it, are you going to give them the same story? Because people don't care. So um, you said, that, was that one on market? Is it like a FISBO or how's it? That's, that's a FISBO. And yeah. he has so it for like one. So I'm going to hear it tell you, that one's going to sit in your follow-ups. Okay. And his offers are only going to go down and his motivation is going to go through the roof. Yeah. Okay. So you just keep a connection with them. Mm -hmm. So when people are like too far off with stuff like that, but I know the property's motivated, but the seller's not quite motivated. Guess what's going to make him motivated over what, what's going to make him motivated? Time. There you go. So you just need to put a little time in the bank, just tickle like a follow-up schedule and then go find other motivated sellers. And by December, like by the end of the year, mm -hmm. so by the way, guys, December is probably one of my favorite months to wholesale because you're in Florida. So well, all the snowbirds come down, they decide to get rid of the house. Yeah. yeah everybody makes so decisions. Yeah. Uh, it's the holidays. People need money for it. And then people make their year in resolutions. And usually they're going to commit to sell the house. They do it by the end of December. The last two weeks of December are phenomenal. So I would put him on a follow up because I think you have a high probability because no one's going to make him an offer. And guess what happens over time with his offers? They, they're going to go down. They're going down. So like you're in a good situation with it. Remember, here's what I say all the time. Sometimes when people say no to you, they do you a huge favor. Like some projects just aren't worth it. They just aren't. So I'm going to tell you, he's going to have to take even a deeper discount to get a cash buyer to buy that project. They got to know they're going to make money because they're going to spend a lot of time and money. And so they have to have enough spread there. The last four or five years, people are buying stuff and they expect to get like a 10% return. It's much different today. So when I, my short career, I did rehabs. I wouldn't do anything less than a 20, 25% spread minimum. And okay. like that number got dilated. So like you go ahead and calculate a number of like what people, as an investor, if I bought that and put in all the rehab and everything, whatever I've spent total, Plus my time, I would expect a 25% return. And I'm telling you, they are going to beat him up hard on those numbers. So you can kind of be the savior and then you go find a cash buyer that's willing to take on a project like that. But follow up, I agree, time is going to be the re resolution on that one. And on the first one, doing your upfront agreement will at least minimize your stalls at the end. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay, you got it. But keep okay. going. More quantity you're learning. And that's the thing is by you taking action, like you're, you're just, you're firing your brain on all cylinders. And it's like the neur neurologically, it's like, oh my God, this yeah. and this. And that's how you learn. By learning in a theory in a classroom, especially in a hotel, you, 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 it's hard to put two and two together until you feel like you make a mistake. We just don't want to make a financial mistake. And guys, when people say no, sometimes they do you a huge favor. Like yeah. the deal just didn't work come back later and get it cheaper, right? Yeah, I agree. So great job, Lo. Good job on taking action and just keep moving forward. Keep the thrusters okay. going and keep shooting up. Okay, we'll do. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Awesome. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Have a great one. You too. Bye. You just got to take the action and do it, right? Yeah, I just got to do it. Like it's, you get the weirdest things that come across oh, you and like, gosh, yes. I, I got to tell you, like most wholesaling deals, like you can break down and like they cert fit a certain mold, but like, um, I still have people this day just surprise the heck out of me, man. They just like, oh, I didn't see that coming. So guys, just so you know, what cash, here's how the cash buyer mentality works. They feel like the market is like falling off of a cliff. They're over exaggerating it. And you guys know it because they're, they're a little bit frightened and they're like, okay, when all the wholesalers start bringing me deals and I don't ask for it, uh, I need to get pickier and they should, they should get pickier, but they get extreme. And they start exaggerating how deep they can get it. And honestly, they're going to have a heck of a run in 2023. 
But eventually, one of them's going to go, well, I'm going to pay a little bit more so I don't have to wait in line. And then what happens is eventually it catches on, and then they all start going, okay, I'm going to go up and more aggressive because we're making so much money on these three or four projects we're working on. But that only happens over time, and I want you to understand that. So don't sit around and like wait for it. I get it. They are way undercutting the market and they're doing it. Why? Because they can, but this won't last forever. But you guys can go out and contact a million motivated sellers and then at least get the follow-ups in your pipelines, get the low hanging fruit and just keep going. Cause this is going to compound all the way through the end of this year, definitely the beginning of next year and all through next year. So go ahead and start building up your pipeline. We're talking about getting a deal January one, the actions you're taking today are going to dictate if you have a deal on January 1 or not. But if you don't take the actions, I guarantee you won't have a deal to come back to. You have to start rowing that boat to get to the finish line. I agree. You, you have to, right? Um, next year we got Kaja. Hi, Beck. How's it going? What's up? Good. I was just checking in. I wanted to do like an accountability call. I started the 90 day challenge yesterday. And, 90. Uh, yeah, the 90 day challenge. And I just wanted to, you know, hop on and say that I was doing I well, I actually started cold calling last month, but I started the challenge, you know. Okay. I like it. Congratulations on uh taking accountability for it and you know, taking the first step on um, the action, right? Yeah, definitely. So what's that what, what are you doing? What market are you in? Give me some information so I remember next time you hop on. Um, well, I'm originally from North Carolina. I'm not saying in Florida, but I'm doing uh, wholesaling in North Carolina. Um, Where in Florida? Are you? Huh? I'm in what? South Florida, like Tallahassee. <laughs> Wait, that's not South. Florida. That's not South Florida. Where do you talking? North Florida. It's not. You're in Tallahassee. Florida? Tallahassee's the tip of Florida. Yes, yes the capital. Yeah, I mean, that's I North assume Florida. It's South Florida. South Florida would be like Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Okay, so I got Either way, I'm in Tallahassee, but I'm um, <laughs> selling in North Carolina. Okay, I mean, Tallahassee's not bad. No? No, I don't think it's bad. I think you should wholesale locally there, right? Uh, there's, tons of, there's tons of deals. There's a lot of deals there. A lot of old school properties there, and there's yeah. a lot of history there. It's, there's a lot uh, of deals there. I, I know wholesalers that do very well there. Yeah. Okay, let me check it out since it's... You should it's always do... Canada. You, if you have the ability to do it local, like unless you're in like downtown Miami, uh, Manhattan, or like LA, you should always take advantage of your local market because you drive it every day, you know it, you know the people around there, um, you know the culture there. It's much easier to get a deal. Yeah. Okay. I will definitely check it out. And so, um, yeah, I mean, that's all I really wanted to have one here for. Just a. All right. Well, if you got any questions, let us know. We'd love to help you out. All right. Thanks. Yeah, have a good Thank one. Okay. See you guys. See ya. South Florida. That threw yeah, me she's, off. She's a little confused. It's okay. That's Tallahassee. All right. Uh, to see that, that's what the uh, that's the uh, Florida state of yeah. So, Rebecca. <laughs> hey Zach. Hey Rick. Hey, How's what's going? going on? Good. Just freezing. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, just really on here for accountability. You know, you guys always encourage me. Um, <clears throat> I've done, I don't know, five or 600 calls this week and just a lot of voicemails. So I'm trying to get my timing right. I think I'm just oh. missing people. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, just, you know, everything I take that you guys give, just trying to incorporate it. I need to get that deal by January 1st. Let's get it going. What's the temperature there now? Uh, let's see. It is 18. That just hurts. <laughs> like the thing is, like you can't see my feet. I have, I have sand. I have flip flops on, and like my feet are cold in the. Ho I wasn't thinking when I did this. I just jumped on the. You were in sweatpants like, for the first time in a very long time. You know why? Because the they, uh, they took me to Starbucks this morning. It was freezing. Thank God I did it. <laughs> I actually had a jacket on and everything. I looked like. Uh, but anyways. Uh, I feel free on that temperature because I don't, yeah. my blood's too thin. You can't take me out of Florida too long. Keep it up. Keep going. You got this. Yeah. What, what uh, list are you uh, cold calling now? Um, so I got a weed complaint government list. Um, I also have vacant and high equity that I've, I've got those three that I'm working on. All right. I like it. Yeah. So just uh, checking in with you guys. Thank you so much. 
All right. Appreciate it. Keep Just it up. Keep going. All right. Boom. All right. Next here we got Curtis. Hello. What's up? You guys, you guys hear me? Loud and yeah. clear. Very good. Okay. So I'm kind of starstruck right now because I can't believe I'm talking to you guys right now. Um, Trust me. I'm, we, we are no stars. If you saw me this morning, and it ain't no star. I didn't get up early. I, I flip flops on. And oh, yeah. Um, I just want to say um, I listen to you guys. I, so I work Friday through Sunday. I work 12-hour shifts in a warehouse. I work in a freezer. So I'm wow. constantly always listening to you guys while I'm at work, like 12 hours a day all the time. Um, so, yeah, you guys like are just like a huge inspiration to me. So um, Appreciate it. I just want to say um, I've been wholesaling or trying to wholesale or get a deal since probably, I don't know, April of this year, um, I got into it because of uh, Paul McCamos. Um, Rhett, may he rest in peace. Um, I actually have a message from him before he died. He said um, that I can do it. So he's basically been my inspiration the whole time. Um, I stumbled upon you guys uh, just looking up wholesaling stuff on uh, YouTube. But yeah, man, um, I'm actually on prop stream right now, um, going through vacants and stuff like that. Um, just texting, you know, uh, sellers while I listen to you guys and, you know, wait to actually, you know, talk to you guys. But, um, yeah, man, um, I'm, I'm out here grinding. I'm trying, you know, every day, Monday through Thursday, you know, um, but yeah, uh, you guys are a huge inspiration and I'm, it, I'm, I feel honored to actually talk to you guys. You know, it's crazy. You know, um, I listen to, uh, I, I mostly listen to Rick a lot. Um, <laughs> be careful, crazy. man. Sometimes it's I crazy. ramble, man. Like I literally just pull out my phone on break, you know, just get on Spotify and I just download each and every podcast or I try to, you know, yeah. and just listen to much, you know, as much information, yeah. you know, as I can from you guys, you know. You um, know how this kind of got started is when I uh, when I was walking Zach through the do it, I'm just like, you know what? We make this so confusing and so overwhelming. And that's when he kind of had the ideas like he goes, let me let me pull that stuff up in your brain mm -hmm. because. I've been doing this forever. Oh, for you. Yeah. I started recording myself on and, deals. Uh, and then I've been a little bit on. more challenging, like pulling the stuff out of my head. And like, you don't realize how much you know until you like, you see, you give somebody one skill set and they yeah. do it. I'm just like, and now I've done it thousands and thousands of times over. And honestly, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't kind of be doing this together. But if it wasn't for me getting him started, he probably wouldn't be doing this. So we decided to kind of put our synergies together. And the key thing is, that we wanted to be like super accessible because everybody we ever dealt with online or anything, it was like this, like you, you had to be like someone super special to be able to talk to them. So we wanted to remove all the barriers to entry. And uh, there's, there's something satisfying talking about someone like you're following and actually like being able to connect with them. And that's why we go live so much. That's why we do it. Um, I don't care. Like whoever gets you started in wholesaling, like, God bless them. Like, that's it. Our job is to try to help you get you to the finish line and keep going because I, I know it can be frustrating and um, give you like the real action plans because I, I think I've been doing it longer than most people on the internet. And uh, I can take a lot of the tactics I struggle with and show you how to do them. And then he has a modern New Day twist on and he's a little bit better with some of the technologies. And that's why I think we're kind of the perfect blend. Plus, we pick on each other a lot. So, no, yeah, I see that uh, too. We, we appreciate hopping on, guys. FYI, I don't think everyone understands this. Uh, we do have a – all these lives are on podcast format uh, on Spotify and on Apple. Uh, it's called the Bags to Riches podcast. I think it's through Zach or Rick Gannon. It'll probably pop up on the top. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're they're on there if you want to listen while you're working because, dude, I, I, I used to live that life, man. Like I used to listen to podcasts while, you know, closing a grocery store. So, like, I, I get it, right? Um what market are you in? Um, so I'm in Illinois, sadly, but um, I'm Where? close to. Um, I'm in Midwestern Illinois, so I'm actually like 40 minutes away from the Quad Cities, and that's actually my market that I'm working on. Is like, dude. not Illinois, but the Davenport side, Bettendorf. Yeah, right dude, you got da Davenport, Moline, Rock Island, dude, money, all money there. Yeah, um, I have a good cash buyer under my belt right now. And then uh, I think it was probably about a month ago now I spoke to um, an attorney because over there they don't really have any good uh, title companies. They have, you know, uh, attorneys that can, you know, handle the deal or whatever. 
So I, I, yeah. you know, I talked to him, see if he can, you know, deal with, you know, wholesalers. He's like, yeah, you know, just send me a deal and I'll, you know, get you squared away. So, you know, I had those things, you know, done. Now I'm just looking for, you know, sellers. And yeah, that's pretty much all I'm doing is every day when I'm off of work, uh, pulling lists and, you know, texting or, you know, calling, you know, Zach. That, keeps, dude, great oh, market, man. No, dude, it's a great market. A lot of people are not lucky with it, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'd be doing that one. Yeah. Um, and I have, you know, I have a lot of, you know, tools and resources like, you know, um, like a guy at my job, you know, he actually has, he's, well, he's a real estate broker and he wants me to get my license so I can work underneath him and, you know, we can do deals and stuff like that. But I'm just like, you know, I watch you guys and you guys always say, you know, don't get your license, you know, and this and that, you know, and, you know, and I'm just like, you know what? No, I'm just going to go the wholesale route and, you know. Yeah. I mean, you're in Illinois. So it is slightly different, but it's not insanely crazy, right? Um, you could get, I don't think, I, I still, I'm going to say no on the license yet. How about you get a deal first in, in, in Illinois? Just do the Quad Cities, dude. You can do one deal. And then from there, use that money to get your license. And then I think you should get licensed after a deal if you're in, living in Illinois. This is why you've listened to me a while. I got to hop on the one-on-ones, man, because I can do – this is when I can just help you guys one-on-one, right? Most people charge you five grand to even get in a Zoom with somebody, right? And uh, the honest truth is, man, like I would say do a deal in Illinois, get your license, and then wholesale in Illinois with a license because, dude, it's, it's, it's a cakewalk. Outside yeah. of Chicago, Illinois is a cakewalk, and no one ever does it because they're scared of the law. Just get licensed. You should be fine, man. Yeah, I, I, and I'm not a big license guy. That's in general. Illinois is a little bit different, so take it with a grain of salt. But understand the licensing is just a check on a box. It will not – it's not going to help you be a better wholesaler. Like they're going to try to train you to be like a real estate agent, and uh, I hate that model. But that's that's my personal opinion because I've been told my entire life, you need to get a license, you need to get a license. I'm like, tell me why. I, I 20 years without a license, and um, – your state's a little bit different. So Penelope's playing lawyer on this thing. We love you, Penelope, but it's not 25000 if you do one deal. Now, it is up to, but the honest truth is no one's ever enforced that law. Yeah. And number two- Give me a case law you can, on it. You can do one deal in Illinois without being, quote unquote, in trouble. But really, there's ways around it. But I would stick to just doing one deal first, use that money, get a license, and then wholesale in Illinois. <laughs> yeah, Um yeah, that's kind of my plan. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. No free no. doing anything, obviously. Uh, yeah. This is not legal advice. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, thanks, guys. Um, before I go, though, I actually do have two uh, legit questions. Um, so my only two questions would be, um, so, and I've heard Rick say this a lot, and I've, I've watched the video back and back and back just to kind of, you know, really understand it. But you, I, I hear Rick always say, you know, when you do your first deal, you know, okay, you have your cash buyer, you know, give it to the title company first. But after that, make sure that your cash buyer gives you, you know, that deposit straight to you. Um, my only question is, how would the, my cash buyer, you know, give it to me? Check, uh, account deposit, or, you know, how, how would I go real simple. So if you have an LLC or a corporation, Inc., whatever it is, um, after you do the first deal and they're comfortable with you and they know you're legit and you work with like real title companies and even lawyers, you just have them make it out to your company and just write on their deposit for, you know, one, two, three, you know, Main Street. And that's it. When you do that, you will never, ever babysit a deal again. Yeah. Now, I live in the state of Florida. They question everybody and we get it on about a third of them. OK, but it's. The problem is, just so you guys know, when you make out uh, when a, on an assignment contract, when they make out a non-refundable deposit, no matter what your contract says, if you give it to a third-party escrow agent, they can only release that money if both parties agree, regardless of what your agreement says. So, if you want to, if you can't get them to make it out to you, you can write out a separate agreement with your um, escrow company, which is usually your title company saying both parties agree to release um, these funds in the event um, they do not perform um, a closing on or before this date with clear title. 
and then they can get released. Why? Because I've had multiple people like not show up at a closing and go, ah, whatever. And then they go, you're not getting that deposit. And then what happens is if you get in a dispute, usually the escrow company, they have to remain neutral. They send the money to your state. And then you actually have to go usually to small claims court uh, or maybe even regular court, depending on the amount. And then you have to uh, present it to a judge, which now you're open to interpretation. It's a nightmare. The idea is if someone doesn't pay attention and say you took a $3,000 deposit, I don't want to chase you down for it. So if you have them give you the money directly, so how do you do it? Just have them give you a, typically a check. They can do a wire and just have them make it out to your company and put it on there. And if you're confident about it, they think that's business as usual. And it's, and by the way, I've taken money from them. And here's another little trick. If you're uncomfortable and scared with it, go, listen, if you do not buy that property, which if they don't buy that property, you probably wouldn't want to do business with them again. Right mm -hmm. now. Um, I've had some people, if you buy a property within the next six months from me, I'll credit you on that deal. But like, honestly, I'm going to, if I had a $3,000 deposit kept, I'm going to upcharge them like another $5,000 on the next deal. Cause I really don't want to do business with them. It's just the truth. So, um, I've had someone go, you got to give me a credit towards the next buy. You buy something in the next 90 days. I have plenty of inventory and I'll make it happen. After that, it goes bye-bye. Most people will not come back in 90 days and buy from you again. Because if they couldn't buy the first one, how are they going to buy the second one? So simply, short answer, have them make out a check to you or just send you a wire. And then you got to give them a receipt for it. If you give it to a third-party escrow company, if there's a dispute and you don't have a pre-signed agreement, that money goes to the state and it can take you up to two years to get it back. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. Yeah, it's like, it's, so it's, honestly, it's, did you know, like in a lot of, lot of like big wholesalers, that's how they do it. They just have them make out the check directly. That way they don't have to worry about any of the uh, like deposits being transferred or like, what do I do if you don't show up? So to release escrow money, both parties have to sign off on it. And if the guy's ticked off at you or the gal, they're not going to sign that part ever. So okay. but part of me says too, like, well, okay, fine. You put $5,000 in their um, earnest money then I'm not going to give you your money back and you can just let it sit for years for them. And eventually they'll negotiate it with you to get back too. like, I don't want to spend money on a lawyer though. That's the catch 22. And if you guys go to court and you have an LLC, you actually, you have to get a lawyer to represent you. So sometimes you're spending a thousand to $1,500 just to get two or $3,000 back. It's a bad deal. That's why if you can have them make it out to you, that's great. Usually the first time you've never done a deal, they don't trust you and you don't have credibility. So have them do the escrow. Just have them pre-sign a, a release in the event they don't show up to the closing. Okay. What else uh, you got? Um, um, well, you kind of probably answered my other question, which is basically just like, okay, how do I give my money to the attorney? But, you know, yeah, it's pretty much, you know, basic, you know, I, I imagine, you know, just give them a check also, you know, for yeah. that. Yeah, I just um, so uh, checks just take a little time to clear. Everyone likes to do wires now, but guys, keep in mind if you're if you're doing a small deposit, like it's between thirty five and sixty dollars to do a wire just one way. Now it's ridiculous. Banks love to charge for everything, yeah. and sometimes my check clears faster than the wire does because of all the the uh, fraud pre uh, prevention and protection things going on. So, just something to keep in mind. All right. Uh, thanks, guys. Um, it was really nice meeting you guys. Um, Zach, I just want to say I like the Wu-Tang Clan shirts that you always wear. I love it, bro. I love, <laughs> I love it. it. I'm a, you have I'm a to. Huge fan too, I always sing a Wu-Tang song sometimes. Uh, I don't think I can say this in the lyrics. But <laughs> I love Wu-Tang. <laughs> okay, dude, reach out to us anytime. All right, for sure, for sure. I'm in the face group too. So, uh, yeah, um, I'll definitely uh, keep you guys posted. Thanks, man. Perfect. All right, man. Appreciate it. Yep. I promise you, if you ever meet any of our family members, they will not be starstruck when yeah, they see us. They'll roll their eyes like, oh, geez. Yeah, they're watching us. <laughs> oh, we, we should have a special guest on it. We should, have roast we should us. have put the bride right in between. You know what? I want to get And then my... we could have our audience try to talk her out of it. You guys should have been at dinner talk last night. Talk her into it. Dinner last night, my aunt was there, and she was giving stories about you as a kid. It was great. Nice. It was great. I can't mention some of them. But some of them would just get roasted so hard. The gurus would love to know half these funny stories. But Dude, the, the 70s were rough when I was growing 70s up. Were rough it was, for you. We were like, uh, my parents treated us like cattle. There was four of us. And oh, it's just like, 
just throw them some food, keep them going. And then we would leave all day and then we'd come back and you just had to be home by dark to check in. And then we'd sneak back out and like, go back out. I don't even know how I survived up to this point. So you were really skinny as a kid. Skinny is not even the word. He was a really skinny kid. There was no food back then. I think we didn't have the processed foods. They didn't come out like to like the late seventies, early eighties. And were, that's when everyone started getting like but, uh, hefty, hefty, hefty. You were what? Uh, 135 pounds. I was, five. I was, I was in the one thirties till. How um, tall were you? I don't even remember, but you're uh, like five. I was a junior right? in high school. At yeah. Like 130. And within one year, I think I grew six or seven inches. <laughs> I gained 90 pounds <laughs> and uh, it hurt like my bone. Like, so my bones were growing uneven. And, like, I, my you? mom sent me to the doctor to like, they go, what do you feel? And then, man, I ate everything. So, it, <laughs> and then I discovered physical sports and um, it just, it was weird. But like when I was a tiny one, nobody wanted me on their team or do anything. So it was like, uh, I had mixed emotions. You're like Captain America. It's weird. I kind of like. I guess I matured late, but I guess it's normal, you know, sophomore, junior years when you kind of like get the growth spurt. So that was funny. But, but uh, <laughs> my sisters constantly picked on me and uh, I remind them every day. <laughs> but guys, that's the point. Like, so you look at what we're doing right now. Like we get to go somewhere, we get to go on weddings and we get to go like just places. Right. And yeah. we're able to make more money than ever by doing it because we don't have to work. We do it because we like to, and also we have people doing the stuff that we don't want to do, right? Like, I don't want to cold call right now. You have people cold calling for me, right? I, know. I got up this morning, got everybody set. I dealt with phone calls, emails, and then um, I went to, like, a nice lunch, watched people eat, and then uh, Zach's like, hey, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna do a live. I'm like, okay. And then I just, I, I literally walked in, like, two minutes before he turned on the camera, so it's like... No, I know. So I knew what we were going to talk about, but it's... The idea is, is wholesaling gives you the freedom to do what you want, yeah. to spend more time with your family. Listen, money is important, and it gives you a ton of options. But like in the day, we only get so much time on this earth, and we all don't know. So why not make the best of it? So I get it. Most of you are coming here to try to make a change because you're frustrated. 70% of the Americans hate what they do. And my goal of introducing you to wholesaling is saying you have options. Now, yeah. I waited till I was 33, 34 to figure it out. He figured it out like 16, 17. It doesn't matter when you do it. So when you want to make a change and you want to make a commitment, it is painful, it is uncomfortable, but it is well worth it. And that's why we're here talking to you today. So guys, we, you have hopped on and talked to our one-on-one -on -one, uh, calls. You have been on stage, watching us on stage with our suits and ties. And we, we answer some Q&A today with, with a microphone, right? We live from the wedding. We, we're all fun. Teach wholesaling uh, at the wedding. You think that would get me kicked out of the family? We'll, we'll be mic'd up, you know, and, uh, you know. Fun. I'll have to talk to her about it tonight. Oh, geez. But, yeah, guys, that's the thing. Like, this was like a two-hour event. You pay us a 1000 bucks. This is what you're going to get. Um, I, I just – I hope you guys know with, with the inside of those, like, crazy big paid things. And here's the part. If we had everyone who got the same info, if we were on a stage and made it all fancy – Maybe I have an MC. We have we have the rap music sounding all cool and, and gangster, right? Yeah, we'd have Wu Tang. But the the thing is, you guys be walking out like, wow, I can't believe I only paid a thousand dollars for this information. This is insane. Yeah. And you guys, you're giving it for free. And maybe some of y'all are watching your PJs right now, watching this too, right? Like, you don't have to get up, get fancy, all this stuff. And the truth is, the money, the dreams, everything you want in your life, you are capable of it. You are, you as a human being are more capable right now. If you have an internet connection, you're more capable to do anything that your heart desires. And I know it's so cliche because everyone in America says that, right? You do whatever you want in your life. And that's why America is so great. That's why the craziest entrepreneurs out here. But like, it is true. And honestly, it took me being able to do it myself as 17 of wholesaling for me to tell you that. I probably wouldn't be. I probably wouldn't say that if if I did it at twenty five. I'd be like, oh, I could have never done it at seventeen, right? But I was able to, and so I'm a living testament. You're a living testament. Anybody can go out here, have conversations with motivated sellers, mm -hmm. make offers, get deals, and change your life. Um, there's no way of complicating it. That's what it's all about. Freehostling.com has everything you need to know about wholesaling, absolutely for free. And guys, these gurus, they they they, they can't keep up with us. Okay. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep flexing on Guru, making them feel bad, and uh, just helping the people out. You know, that, that's the thing. So if, if we can really break this down, you know, Kevin says it, you know, 
Um, don't overcomplicate things and just go. If you stop overcomplicating things and just take action, you'll do well. Get out of your own head, yeah. guys. Just take out. You're no different than Means Act and anyone else that's, that's teaching these highly paid courses. The difference is you actually have to take the action. You've got to get out from these, these seminars and these, these pep rallies, and you got to do the work. And that's what all we do is talk about the work. I don't want you getting on planes. I don't want you to get on a boat. I'm not going to take you to fancy dinner. I'm just going to give you simple, clear-cut instructions how to get this done and cut it out. So, guys, this is Zach Ginn signing out. Rick Ginn signing out. BrayHolson.com. The next live will be on my channel on Sunday. And uh, we have videos on the Flipper that Zach really cool Ginn channel. We have yeah, exclusive content that's just being all week. So, yes, there should be a live tomorrow, but there's not. But there's a really cool live. Uh, Flip with Rick video on the Flip Deck YouTube channel. You broke down how to get a free proof of funds letter. And you broke down like four or five ways to get free proof of funds. Like yeah. It, it, it'll be 5 o'clock tomorrow. be really exciting. Uh, on my channel tomorrow, I think I talk about how Jovi uh, made 6100 bucks mm -hmm. in his first three weeks. So it, it's amazing, guys. So much awesome content. Make sure you subscribe to the Flip Alert YouTube channel, the Zach and, Zach and YouTube channel, the Rick and YouTube channel, Wholesaling House for Real, FreeHolson.com. That's it, guys. This is Zach Ginn signing out. Rick Ginn signing out. Free